Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Best Asian Beauty is Supernatural Commentary Podcast where I, someone who has seen the show several times. And I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 4, Episode 18, The Monster at the End of This Book. Written by Julie Siege, directed by Mike Roll. Of all the supernatural episodes in the world, this one had the greatest material impact on my life because when Dean ordered a burger, I thought, I want a burger, and then I paused and went out and I (laughs) bought a burger, and that's the most I've ever done because of a supernatural episode. (laughs) Amazing. A win for the burger industry, (laughs) written by Julie Siege. I think this episode is fascinating because we, this is like the third episode in a roll. Is that a statement that people say? Third thing in a roll. Or roll. Uh, or roll? Oh, like, it's... Or on, roll. Yeah, on a roll. Like, the, on a like roll. season four is on a roll. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the third one that's, like, just one plot in the episode. Yeah. I mean, can we consider, like, on the head of a pin, one plot? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's the plot of who's killing the angels. Yeah. And, like, yeah, there was, like, Sam's, like... Drinking demon blood. And it does feel like a little bit like a subplot, but not really. It's just... It's mm-hmm. it's the same story still. And Terrible Life is obviously a very one-plot yeah. episode. Yeah, and this one is so... so self-contained that Sam and Dean do not appear to have lived it at all in this I episode. I know, isn't that absolutely insane? But in this one, it's super fascinating because this one is vehemently plot. In comparison yeah. to the last episode. But it is also like so the story is so simple in comparison to On the Head of a Pin. Mm-hmm. Nothing much happens this episode. And it goes by so quickly. Did you feel that way too? Um, not really. Well, when I was watching On the Head of a Pin, like when Sam finally busts out his demon killing chops, I was like, damn, mm-hmm. so much has happened already. And then you check the time and it's like almost halfway, like, just a little bit after halfway through or something. Here, mm-hmm. it's like, this is like just the first 10 minutes of the episode, right? And you check it, and it's about to end. So, I don't know. It it feels different. Also, this is just, like, an iconic episode for Supernatural, just by virtue of what it introduces, what it does. When is Chuck God? 11. So, wait, so, like, when do we see him next? Like, this season. I, right, right, because uh, he puts a hand on Castiel's shoulder as blinding light comes through the window. No, but, like, okay, like, we see him at, like, the fucking Supernatural fan con with the Wincest role players, and he's still, like, Chuck the author then, and then we don't see him for, like, six more seasons, and then he's God? The thing is, it's never clarified whether he was always God, like, here... He was just a writer here and then got possessed by... Well, you know, I don't... I'm not sure. I mean, if they know that he's a prophet... Like, wouldn't the angels know if he was God? Wouldn't you be able to sense that shit? Bro, they, they had this, like, necklace that lights up when God's around. And they were like, it's not lighting up, therefore God is not around. And then at season 11, the, the question was like, wait, if you're God, then why is the necklace not lighting up? And then Chuck just, like, switches, like, his hand up and then it lights up and he was like, I turned it off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Supernatural so, like, gap. <laughs> so, like, if you're asking God, why the right, angels can't sense him, he, yeah, it's because okay, he turned, he it turned off. that shit off. Yeah. Okay, but I don't think he's God right now because we see him alone. As well. And he's still... He's a freak out. And he's still being, like, a guy. Yeah. So... I also really don't like the idea of that Chuck is already God here. Um, I think it's interesting if he's already God and, like, deliberately hid that part of his memory from himself or something. I think it's fascinating if, like, he deliberately hid that memory or, like, he forgot. Like, I think there's something to... 
Like, oh yeah, but like he's currently God, he's fully yeah. aware that he is God, and he's yeah. just like I'm doing this because I'm a sicko. It's not very interesting. Yeah, it's not that interesting to me. Also, I mean, I think maybe if it was like Chuck author and then Chuck God later, that transition happens a little bit around season seven, because I think the like. Way prophets work is that when one dies, another comes to being, comes to prophecy or whatever. Uh huh. And so, and all right. So Kevin, Kevin, when Kevin yeah. shows up, like Chuck gets taken over by the god instinct. Yeah, and the implication should be that Chuck died or whatever, like stopped being a prophet or whatever, mm-hmm. before um, Kevin shows up. I think mm-hmm. Chuck is in the. 1005 fan fiction episode though. Sam and Dean does not oh, see him. Yeah. But he like Right, at he's the end. watching the musical like, at the end. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he's like, nice one guys or something. So so I feel like he's God by then. He's already he's God like by like then. Being a, he's being a sicko when he claps. Yeah. He's a sick bitch. He likes freak sex. Doesn't he tell like Metatron, Everybody that like, he's bisexual, I, yes. Yeah, <laughs> like Wonderful. was that like I assumed that he, like it was like as Chuck like like Chuck the author like fucked people of like multiple genders, but like <laughs> him like as God fucked people. Well, I don't know. I guess him as God fucked Becky. So or was that a, whatever? <laughs> we'll never know. No, but like that's what I'm saying. That like the idea of Chuck that appeals to me the most is like. He is God here, but, like, but he something happened. Off. Like, he forgot. Or, like, you know, like, he's not mm-hmm. he, he's not aware. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I just think that also jives in better with the concepts of, like, yeah, God does not care about us. God does not. And mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, probably. Because, like, he chose to, like, forget all that shit. And, like, yeah. hang out here on Earth. And, like, actually did yeah. forget all that shit. Fascinating guy, this guy. There's no then sequence this episode. Yeah, no then sequence. It's just Chuck, like, sleeping, I suppose. And... Mm. Wait, I'm supposed oh, wait, to ask you, you need what to you ask know and what shit. I knew about yeah. the episode, yeah. You're derailing our sacred podcast <sighs> format. Well, what did you know about this episode? Uh, that they meet Chuck and they find out about the supernatural books and the Winchester gospel and that he is a prophet as of now and that... There would be some kind of a situation where Sam is in danger and Dean's begging Cass for help and Cass says something about how I can't help you, but by the way, if a prophet was in, like, a room with, like, something, then there would be something with an archangel, blah, 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 just so you know why I can't help you and gives (laughs) Dean a sly little look out of the corner of his eye that I have, like, five gift sets of that saved to my phone, I think, just because he looks really good in that scene. So, yeah, those are the things I know. My only thought at that time, like, after Cass decides that he's gonna let Dean in into the Archangel plot, and when he does that, like, look of, like, moving his eyes only or whatever, yeah, I was like... He thinks he is so cool. And he fucking is. He literally fucking is so cool. Like, good for you, Cass. What's How wrong cool does with he me? think he and is? also him. I think I have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm literally just thinking of Cass's face in that scene. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my god. And it's true. I mean, it's a good face. Yeah. How yeah. cool does he think he is? I, don't, I feel like I, I swing between, like, Cass is very unaware of himself as an individual because he just considers himself part of heaven, so he doesn't really think about his, like, fun one-liners and dramatic appearances, and, like, he's practicing that shit in the mirror. Like, I don't know which of the two is true to me. I actually am a big fan of Cass just being like this. Because, like, I mean, Supernatural, the show about, well... Not about. Maybe the show that is so about. Well, whatever. A show about, (laughs) like, being, like, you know, performing masculinity or whatever. And coolness and being just like in the movies. The idea of Cass just being like that even without all of the having to 
put on a show and everything. That's a appeal to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Yeah. I think he is just like that. Well, now there's no then sequence. Chuck, as we said, just sleeping. And he is having a v- dream. Like, the dream is, like, just flashing of scenes of Sam and Dean. I tried to figure out, like, what episode the scenes are from or what whatever. But I don't think... I didn't bother. I don't, I don't... I couldn't figure it out. Uh, we cut to a comic shop. Comic book shop. Sam and Dean are entering. They are wearing their FBI outfits, but with coats this time. They approach the counter and they say that they are Agents DeYoung and Shaw and that they're investigating something and what they're investigating are like really really generic shit like anything strange are there flickering lights i'm glad there probably wasn't a real case in this building because they immediately abandoned it to chase down the author that made them have washboard abs on the cover of his books like I hope no one died in that building because they decided that they had other priorities. After Sam and Dean go, like, are there any like cold spots? The guy's like, Oh, I know what you're doing. You're LARPing. And Sam and Dean are like, What? What are you talking about? What is LARPing? And the guy's like, Oh, come on. I know you like you don't know. It's live action role play. And this scene did annoy me a little bit because if this guy did believe that Sam and Dean are actually LARPing, he wouldn't do everything that he does in this scene. Yeah, like, show them the books and shit. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, he wouldn't be like, oh my god, you guys are LARPing, like, these characters in this book series. Come on, (laughs) I'll tell you all about... Like, they're already LARPing it, bro. Yeah. But whatever, we need a way to get Sam and Dean to figure out what the fuck is going on. The guy is like, I know what the book you're copying, let me show you. And... The book is a book series called Supernatural. Two guys yeah. use fake IDs with rock aliases, hunt house, ghosts, demons, vampires. And he goes, ah, oh, what are their names again? It's Steven Dirk, Sal and Dane, and then Sam is like, Boo. oh, Sam and Dean. <laughs> Boo. Boo. Society, if it was Steven Dirk, though. Like, I think that's real fun. Will Sam yeah. ever be a Steve? I don't think so. But, no, but he I could think be. Dean could be a Dirk. I think Dean could be a Dirk, yeah. I think Sam mm. will always be Sam 5 ever, just because I love yeah. the implication of the name Sam and Samuel. What is the implication? Oh, the meaning. It means, like, God has heard. Ah, uh, slay. The guy shows them the copies of the box, and it's, like, very, very, very much so in the bargain bin. Like, the font size on the summary on the back, like, it's giant. Like, it's trash, this book is. And yeah, it's called Supernatural by Carver Edlund. Why did they get to be in the pen name? Like, did did the writers fight over this? It is fascinating, because this is written by Julie Siege. Yeah. Shouldn't it be, like, Kripke something? Yeah. Blank Kripke? I don't know. Maybe they were like, if it's Kripke, it's like too on the nose, too obvious. Whatever. Mm. I mean, Julie Siege cannot th- make it like her name. So it needs to be fucking Ben Edlund and Jeremy Carver. Boo! I'm just kidding. Boo. It's fine. Boo! <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I don't know. Hasn't Sarah Gamble written more episodes? Like, I don't like her, but like, I'm surprised that like Gamble isn't in there. Yeah. Is it Julie Siege and Sarah Gamble, the writing team, that broke up? No, it was Rael Tucker. Oh, and... yeah, Rael Tucker. Yeah. Tucker. Yeah. Wait, Tucker Gamble is like. That's like a name. That's a name, yeah. Yeah. Tucker's more of. Is like a real, like, first name that I think is more common than Carver is. Yeah. Imagine, name, like, looking at your fucking child and being like, okay, and now your name will be Carver. Like, you're racing. This is, like, <laughs> like Hannibal levels of shit. Like, what? <laughs> is Hannibal... Wait, what? Is Hannibal Hannibal's first name? Yeah, because his last yes. name was Lecter. <laughs> yeah. His no one <laughs> chose that shit. I mean, yes. I guess he, he's, like, not, like, from an English-speaking country, though, no, no, right? No, no, so Hannibal is know. an actual name. Yeah, Hannibal is an actual name. Oh, yeah, like, Hannibal Buress? Yeah, what, is a comedian, I is? think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, have you yeah. seen that post that's, like, 
I can't believe they didn't figure out that can- that Hannibal is a cannibal. His name is literally Hannibal. Like, it's one letter off. Yeah. And somebody was like, Will's name is one letter off away from kill. So, like, how did they not figure <laughs> that out? So true. The cover of this book is, like... Yeah. They're, fucking... Sam and Dean are both shirtless. Neither of them look like themselves. They have long hair. Both of them or yeah, just Sam? Both have long both hair. Both of them, right? But yeah. like yeah, but like they're like blonde. Like so they like they can't blonde. both be Sam. And you know what? I I hate this cover mostly because it implies that in the book Carver Edland does not differentiate the fact that Sam has long hair and Dean has super cropped uh semi what do you call this fucking hairstyle? Crew cut I, Dean how has would a crew I cut. Know? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, but we see other illustrations, and he drew Bobby completely fine. <laughs> like, Wait, the when Bobby, did we see other illustrations? Like, it, like it, there's like a bunch of quick flashes. And Bobby is just a normal guy? No, Bo- yeah, Bobby looks like he does. So <laughs> No, I mean, there, there can also be the interpretation of this as like... Because, I mean, many writers have said this. A lot of the times, they're not in charge of the promotion Cover. of the book. And the promotion does include the cover art. So yeah. maybe this is like, it's out of Chuck's hands how the cover is. Like, Dean reads like the back of the book. And it's episode one of Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Why is that like, I mean, I know why that is the beginning. Because it's when Dean goes to Sam. Dad mm. is on a hunting trip. Hasn't been home in a few days. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But like, does Chuck just know like everything that happens? And then he's picking out the nice cases or whatever? Or is it like as supernatural is happening is happening in his head? Well he writes these before the thing happened. Oh yeah, that's true. I, I do like I am curious what Chuck's visions of Sam and Dean are. Because if it this is Chuck God, I think it does inform how God sees Sam and Dean's story. Like, it's not a constant surveillance of, like, every single thing that mm. happens. He sees. Yeah, it's just it's the like, interesting cases. Yeah, the highlights of their day or whatever is what he sees. And I think that does mm-hmm. inform some of the stuff that happens in later seasons. But yeah. Sure. They got all the copies of Supernatural that they can. And yeah. we get the title card. And the title card is, like, the cover of Sam and Dean being hot, long-haired, blonde men. Hot and it's Supernatural yeah. by Carver Edland. Yeah. Well, we cut to the motel, and uh, I think people care about this shot because it's Dean Cause Dean, reading, yeah, uh, Route Six 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 on the bed, and like people really like when he reads in bed on his side. <laughs> You're so mean. People really like when he reads in bed, like on his side. Well, don't they? <laughs> I mean, they do, but the way you said it, don't be so mean. I didn't. I didn't mean it in a mean way. <laughs> I was just saying that this is something they like because it's similar no. to like a shot in like fucking Ackles as equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In uh, the f- what's the name of the plane one? Something traveler. Yeah, Phantom Traveler. Phantom Traveler. Yeah, I was saying it's a, it's a pattern, and people have enjoyed both of these shots. It's one of those, like, shots where it starts from his foot or his knee or whatever, and then it pans up to his face. Right? Oh, right, yeah, and, like, I think. people like that kind of shots with Dean when he's lying in bed. This is such right, an because... uncomfortable pose, though. Like, don't lie mm-hmm. down like that when you're reading in bed. Lie down like a normal person. It's because yeah. they're trying to make him hot. Okay, if you lie, what do you mean by lie down like a normal person? Do you mean like sit in bed? Or do you mean like lie down on your back so that the ceiling light shines into your eyes and kills you? No, like lie down on your side. Like fully lie down. And then just prop the book up. And then like okay. have a pillow between your knees or whatever. You know, be comfortable. Like, I was yeah. looking at this shot thinking, his back is gonna kill him. Like, what are you doing, Dean? But to be fair mm. to me, I always have back problems constantly. It's like a brother to yeah. me, so maybe that's just Yeah, me. maybe you should be lying on your side like Dean. Exactly. Dean's upset about how this book has everything in here, from the racist truck to him having sex. 
The so only this is episodes that they criticize in this episode are ones that were written by guest writers or people they thought were going to be permanent guest writers because it's Route 666, then- <laughs> Bugs, yeah. and Red Sky at Morning. And I guess it's because Julie Siege did not want to upset her colleagues. Yeah. Who wrote um, Route 666? Um, Buck Lemming. No, it wasn't Buck Lemming Bugs. No, B- uh, Bugs was like Rachel something and like it was another writing team that never came back. I, can- I still cannot comprehend why the fuck they decided to bring Buck-, Buck Lemming. And also keep them. Because like literally every single facet of supernatural fandom hated those people. Like for real. I'm being so for real right now. Every, every single one hated them. I don't know. Weren't there nepotism rumors? Of course there was nepotism. Not rumors. Like it's for real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... But, like, it is just fascinating to me that every time a Buck Lemming episode is about to come out, everyone's like, oh, god damn, what the fuck are these two gonna do this time around? Like, everybody is pissed at them, like, for real. And they just kept them. Penultimate yeah. episode written by them, even. It's not like Supernatural tries to be good. Once, once we start getting into the Buck Lemming seasons, you'll understand oh. what I mean. Okay. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. So Sam's doing research on his laptop about this book series, and he's saying that it started publishing in 2005. It's pretty obscure. Uh, A few got put out, but then the publisher went bankrupt. And the last one is No Rest for the Wicked, which is, you know, 316 ending with Dean going to hell. You know, they look at the fan forums a bit. Blah, blah, blah. They mention Sam girls and Dean girls. And then there's a, a Wincest mention, of course. Um, but, you know, Sam and Dean both say no to incest. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this where the Supernatural hates its fans so much sort of thing starts? starts? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I'm glad that Julie Siege through Sam and Dean is saying no to incest, but like, I think you can just not interact also. I mean, if you well, start interacting with the fandom at this point, yeah. I think you do kind of need to. Because this was That's fair. This was like when the incesties were like the only facet of fandom or whatever. I see. Yeah, no, that is yeah. rough. That is pretty rough. Like, Imagine writing a show and everyone's just like, and now the brothers in it will fuck. Like, okay, fine, what, what? Uh, I would say that, like, they they also do this thing where they read, like, a specific fan. And they go Mm. like, oh, for fans, they do sure complain a lot. And then (laughs) this one person says the demon storyline is tried shade and overall craptastic. I think that is a compliment, right? Is that a compliment? No. <laughs> he calls it craptastic, which means it's no, bad, but like in yeah. a way that is so grand that it rounds back up to good. I don't think that's how... No, I think it just means that it's bad. <laughs> well, it means that to me. All right. And this is still true forever, five ever even. Supernatural fans do love to complain. And like when there mm-hmm. are supernatural fans who are like defending the show for all it's worth, I'm like, get out of here. You don't really mean <laughs> that. Like, you yeah. you watch the show. You know it's bad. <laughs> like, yeah, you have to yeah, lie stop to yourself. lying to yourself. <laughs> Yeah, or it's really, I like to see a list of every other thing you've watched before this that led you to think that this is a good thing. Like, what sad, secluded life were you living before? (laughs) I mean, I think I've told you that, like, the only TV shows from the US that I watched before Supernatural was like House MD. And, like, there was this other one that I didn't really watch more of. I watched my mom watch it called, Mm. like, Ghost Whisperer. Okay. And I thought the TV show Dog Whisperer was a spin-off to the TV show Ghost Whisperer. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And they, she, yeah. it's just a lady. She talks to ghosts. Good for her. I mean, oh, really? that's sort for of what real. Supernatural is. They didn't even get into the difference between Sam Girls and Dean Girls, because I feel like those people are so different. When does, when does the real split 
happened. I guess in season four, probably, right? Because that's when they're, like, at odds the most. Yeah, I suppose so. So maybe at this point, it's still not... It's about the brothers and not, like, the individual brother, brother. <laughs> brother, mm-hmm. brother. You know what I mean. It's about yeah. the, like, the, them as a duo at this point. Later on in season 10, I think they do make a... Oh, Sam Dean girl with um the the well, girl who's okay, directing Marie the show. Marie isn't even a Sam girl. She's a fake Sam girl. Like you listen to those songs and you tell me that she's a Sam girl. Like like, like Sam's only song. lines are about how like Dean's such a great older brother. Like a true Sam girl would never think that. That 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 all the songs in that thing were crazy because Dean's song is like legitimately just like a song introducing the show. Sam's Dean song is about, about well, Dean. Yeah, Sam's song is about Dean, and Cass's song is about Dean also. And it's like no, okay. exactly like Marie is not a Sam girl. Like who wrote that one? Robbie Thompson. Robbie Thompson. Like he doesn't understand anything. Like he needs to reread the dictionary. But I mean, to be fair. John and Mary, husband and wife, bringing home the brand new life. His name is Sammy. Name is I'm Big Brother Doom. Yeah. Perfect family. So it seems it's a banger verse. And that song is a banger. Like, for fucking real. You know what's so yeah. miserable? I think we've all said all of this. Like, everything we're saying right now, I think we already said in the podcast. <laughs> but they don't have the cast song on Spotify. They only have yeah, the Sam and I think you said song. this on the podcast. Horrible. Why they do that? Why they do that? And like you can't even listen to it like in the episode because the episode is like it cuts to like backstage, and so the audio yeah. changes as Dean is like chasing the fucking thing that they're hunting and this thing. I mean, horrible. It's difficult for cast girls out here. Dean says that we've got to find this Carver Edlin, but apparently there's just no records of him online. So they go to the publisher's house to try to figure out who it is and i think yeah this scene is bad the scene that's about to happen is bad i think that they i think supernatural may hate women do you like get this vibe gray sometimes that supernatural (laughs) might hate women i am beginning to think that you may be right i wonder (laughs) where this hatred of women is gonna go in the tv show supernatural (laughs) i also okay so like there's the publisher right i mean uh, if, if all else fails, at least she has fun hair. But, like, I feel like the way that they've styled her hair is, like, this is the equivalent of having blue hair and pronouns in 2005. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I I didn't think that, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, uh, I guess it's a bob and, like, half of it is blonde and half of it is black, which I think is fun. What happens is that this publisher, who, you know, like, is, like... A professional whose job involved supernatural is instead treated as like a giant a super fan. fan. Girl? I don't think that's how that goes. Like I feel like that's not usually how a publisher interacts with the, with the, the works that she is publishing. publishing. You like well, obviously you can like the stuff you're working on. Like that's fine. Yes, but but like it's not not not. I think to this degree, especially because at this point, um, Sam and Dean are introduced as like journalists or whatever. They're mm-hmm. going to write the piece about Supernatural to get the word yeah. out or whatever. And it's uh-huh. like, if that's the case, then I feel like this publisher should act well, Be more, more professionally. Professional. Yeah. Yeah. And not like, I'm not going to let you publish if you slander my boys. Like, they're not your boys. This is your job. (laughs) Yeah. And also, like, I mean, that's a reasonable stance to have. Like, oh, if you're just going to insult the book series, then I'm not going to give you an interview. But like, yeah, that's not in whatever where they're portraying it here. It's just. Yeah, it's yeah, so she has odd. absolutely no financial interest in these books. It's purely like, oh, and then if we get the word out, then I can read more stories about these men that I want to fuck so bad. This ex- like you can have this like you know a publisher who is a fan. You can have that. It's just so completely the way they write it is like well, it's misogynistic one, 
And yeah. I just don't think anyone would do this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think it works. Other ways you can do this is like you have a publisher who is a fan, but... Uh, like, uh, these books are overlooked and these characters are really strong, but like... Not in a, like, I personally want to fuck Sam and Dean so, so bad and yeah. don't even have a job way. Like, they can go on the aspect of, like, yeah, we kept on publishing it because I personally believed in the story, but yeah, it just mm-hmm. didn't work out. And, like, there's yeah. just ways to do it that isn't so, like, horrible. Yeah, so the, the so horrible is, okay, so they show up and they meet this woman. Sam and Dean are posing as journalists writing about the Supernatural series. She starts off by saying that, you know, they never got the attention they needed and people just want to read romance craft now like Dr. Sexy MD. Is this, what, is this our first Dr. Sexy mention? I think so, but also Dr. Sexy is a TV is show, a TV so is the implication here that like... It's an they... adaptation of a book series? Yeah, but also... Yeah. Do you, do you ever think about the fact that, like, every single novel that Chuck has is, like, an episode of Supernatural? That's pretty bonkers, right? I mean, because, like, a TV, uh, like, TV is more expensive to produce, I think, than books. Yeah, but you do have a team. Yeah, you do have a team. And also, it's just the format of the TV show is you have a bunch of it. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. it's just how TV shows are. With books... Like there are, how does, there are how does, like, this, how does a season only even work? Book series with like n- like of maybe like a hundred pages each that are like that long though. A hundred pages? Those novels are not a hundred pages. They're like what eighty? Have you seen this? The books that Sam and Dean were holding? Those are not just eighty pages. Or 100, or whatever. Well, you saw how big the font on the back cover was. There's probably, like, five words per page. (laughs) Yeah, maybe so. But, like, yeah, yeah, I think those books are, like, around 200, maybe 250 pages. Also, later, there's, like, comic book pages in Chuck's house, but this isn't a comic series, right? Well, maybe he's a writer for other things. Why are you putting Chuck in a box as a writer? (laughs) Yeah. Good point, good point. I don't know, the Mm. fact, like, I just don't think it will be made into a TV show the way Dr. Sexy Emily is, if there was a book series in that way. I don't know, the only book series of this kind that I have read a lot of is, like, I don't know, Nancy Drew, I suppose? Yeah. I mean, they did turn Nancy Drew into a TV show, which I have not watched. So, But not not in a, yeah, not in this way. You know, the publisher is excited at the prospect of publishing more, but Dean is immediately like, oh no, no, don't do that. It's such a complete series, what with Dean going to hell and all. And then she starts, like, tearing up and going like, oh my god, that was one of my favorite ones because Dean was so strong and sad and brave. I, I'm annoyed. I it's so funny to me because like she goes, Dean is so strong and sad and brave and, and, sad, brave and sad and then she just stops and it's like <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah. This and is then really what that... Dean girls are like. You know what yeah. the thing is? Why this is my complaint. Okay. There are people who like like Dean and like don't give a fuck about Sam, but they still feel the need to be like, but Sam is you know, I love Sam too. <laughs> and like I mean, okay, fine, but at least when Sam girls are like, I love Sam and I could not give a single shit, shit about Dean, I'm like, at least they're honest. Like, you claim to yeah. love Sam, and you're not even doing anything to act on that love. Love is not just an emotion, it's an action too. Boo! <laughs> and with Sam, with Sam girls, it's like they all hate Dean and like, yeah. And I think, I think cast girls are generally honest. Well, okay. It depends. The it spectrum depends. of some the, yeah, of bitter, cast girls bitter is insane. cast girls are my people. Cast girls who say that they also like Dean are on thin ice with me. <laughs> Just like me, yeah. Yeah, she also says that the best parts are when they cry. She calls Madison the first woman since Jessica Sam really loved. First off, what? does Sarah Blake mean nothing to you just like she means nothing to me? <laughs> Secondly, he, everything he to did me. not know Madison. <laughs> he did not know Madison like that. They had like no, for two real, they conversations. Had one they had, they had one two sex. conversations and one <laughs> sex. <laughs> 
And then she says, like, gosh, if only real men were so open and in touch with their feelings. First they off, literally are literally not. hilarious to think of Sam and Dean as being, like, an example of, like, being in touch with your feelings. Secondly, so, Dean goes, real men, and seems, like, genuinely offended. <laughs> I don't even know what he's offended about here. You see, like, are you saying that Sam and Dean are not a real man? <laughs> like, why would she think that they are, man? I don't know. They do some, haha, isn't this funny? Where she's like, how often do you cry like that? Dean says that he's crying on the inside. Blah, blah, blah. And then she says that, you know, she doesn't want any smart-ass article making fun of my boys. I think if she said series, it would be fine. It's just about the fact that it's, like, just about emotional attachment to Sam and Dean and, like, not about, like, the story of Supernatural that I think is yeah, very Yeah, like, Bobby is in here, too. <laughs> well, maybe Bobby is one of the boys. But Sam and Dean claim that they're actually big fans, and so the publisher pop quizzes them on a few things. And I think the only interesting bit is that she asks what Sam's LSAT score is and Sam doesn't remember it at first and then guesses 174. Didn't which, they say this in episode one, like the exact score? Yeah, I think so. Which is why the publisher would know, but yeah. I don't know. It just, it says something about how long it's been since Sam cared about something like that when it was a giant deal to him back then. And yeah. I guess it also says something about, you know, how all the book series, like, exist at the same time, but, like, the the time for the character Sam and Dean passes linearly. And um, Dean saying that his favorite song is a tie between Zepp's Ramble Out and Traveling Roadside Blues. Riverside says something blues. about me, which is that uh-huh. I made ramble on like my personality for a very long time. Yeah, well, yeah, good for well, you. It's a good song. I wasn't like, oh, and I'm going to listen to it on repeat because of De- Dean. I was like, I'm going to listen to it once because of Dean, and I'm going to listen to it on repeat because it's a good song. I don't think I ever got into any Zep songs. Like, I tried when you made that playlist, but it's like, I don't know. Uh, so they ask, Sam asks for Carver Edlund's real name, but the publisher won't give it. You know, she says he's very private, like Salinger. <laughs> Slay. For real. And then Sam, like, sighs and he's like, okay, I, I know the, the way to this woman's heart. And he unbuttons his shirt a little to show his, like, anti-possession tattoo and is like, please, we're, like, really big fans. And then Dean also does that. And then the publisher is like, okay, I'm convinced. And also, I have one, too. And then, like, the camera is, like, cropped so that you do not see the tattoo, but she, like, lifts up her dress so, like, we can assume that it is somewhere on her ass. And that is something that we had to have on this episode. Yeah, and then she finally gives the name Chuck Shirley. And then we don't see her again, which I think is a good thing. But I'm sorry to women everywhere. So, we go to this house. And it's Chuck. He's getting some papers that are fresh out of the printer, and he is about to start reading them. His outfit at this point, I, I would like to mention it, just because it really does set the scene. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like he's on a box, he's on boxers and like, just like a shirt, a ratty shirt, and a bathrobe. And this is how he greets Dean into the house later on. As he reads, this is what he's saying. Sam and Dean approach the rundown ramshackle house with trepidation and also he's like editing along the way he's like he's like crossing stuff out on the paper and then mm. as he's saying this like we see sam and dean go getting out of the car into a house a ramshackle house even with trepidation and it just goes yeah. on like this like chuck is reading like oh they're wondering oh do we really want to learn the secrets behind that door they exchange soulful looks and sam and dean yeah, does in but, fact trade yeah, soulful the, looks the actors outside. heard the word soulful looks and did not deliver they 
traded the most soulless looks possible. Yeah, they ring the doorbell. And they actually do ring the doorbell, IRL. And Chuck is here! Chuck answers the door. And yeah, he's the one who wrote the Supernatural books. And Dean goes, yeah, I'm Dean, this is Sam. The Dean and Sam you've been writing about. And Chuck is just like, okay, fuck off. And then closes the door. But Dean rings the bell again and Chuck's like, okay, I get that it's your fan and that's real nice, but for your own good, I strongly suggest you get a life. <laughs> real. Real. Dean is like, yeah, we do have a life and you're writing it to write your books. Eventually, they bring him to the Impala and then they open the trunk and it's like, you know, guns everywhere. And Chuck begins being like nervous, like, oh my god, these guys are for real gonna kill me. And he's like, okay, um, I get it. You really are my number one fans. That's awesome. So listen, I have some posters inside. <laughs> he's so fucking funny. He's like, yeah, please don't hurt me. Blah, blah, blah. And Sam asks plot specific questions. Like, do you know about Season the angels? Four plot specific questions. Is Lilith breaking the seals? And Chuck is like, wait, how do you know that? It's not published yet. Because I'm still writing it. At some point, he goes, wait, this is some kind of joke, right? Did Phil put you up to this? Which is pretty fun. Who's and, like, Phil? I do love... No, I mean, it's just, you know, Phil's a Grisha, just probably. Some... But, like... Oh, yeah. No, but, like, but, that's yeah, not the part like, that I find friends. fun. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's people who will, like, pull his leg or whatever. And... I mean, we always complain constantly about how Supernatural's world feels so small. Because, like... Everybody only exists when they exist on screen and don't have like a life beyond that. But you know, even like little quips like this does make it like, oh yeah, did like my buddy Phil put you up to this? Yeah. Dean says, Well, nice to meet you. I'm Dean Winchester. This is Sam. And Chuck is like, Oh, I never wrote those names into the books. I never told anybody about it. I never even wrote them down. <gasps> oh. Gasp. He never even looked it up to check if Sam and Dean Winchester are serial killers in the (laughs) FBI wanted list. I guess he didn't. I mean, wasn't there a whole episode where it was like, oh my god, what if Sam and Dean get figured out as serial killers? Because their faces are everywhere in the world right now. Yeah, I guess Chuck doesn't watch the news. Inside, Chuck is drinking and miserable. Um, after determining that Sam and Dean are real, he goes, well, there's only one explanation. Obviously, I'm a god. The, it's really fascinating, because mm-hmm. the, in the obviously I'm a god line, like, every other shot is, like, normal, you know, normal talking shot, whatever. And then for the obviously I'm a god, we just go really, really, really up close to him, and it's the only shot like that in the entire episode, which is fun! Yeah, yeah. I guess this was probably planned pretty far in advance. What What do you mean this? And what do you this mean planned? Just eventually <laughs> being God. But I guess if Supernatural was supposed to end in... Okay, Supernatural was supposed to end in season 5. But like... Chuck was already God in season 5. I forgot about this completely. Season 5 oh. ends with Chuck like disappearing on a chair or something. Oh, well then we need to cut all that out. <laughs> No, Wait, we'll keep it no. all in so I can okay. have my revelation here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that's that's like um interaction bait. Yeah, isn't it so annoying when like like people are wrong in a podcast and you just have to sit there and listen to them be wrong? Like how we said that like Cass never has burnt wings, but he literally does have burnt wings in like twelve twenty three <laughs> or thirteen oh one and you see them on the beach. Yeah, well, I just think personally that if people want to tell us we're wrong, they should do it in a public platform <laughs> to, so, you know, we can have interaction in the podcast. Yeah, Chuck says, no, I mean, I write things and they come to life, so I've got to be a god. A cruel, cruel, capricious god. The things I put you through, the physical beatings alone, and he genuinely does feel bad, which again... All this is pretty, pretty good stuff because of what we know later. He is upset that he killed their father and their mother. He, like, is like, and Sam, you had to go through the whole thing again with Jessica. All for what? For literary symmetry? 
I toyed with your lives, your emotions for entertainment. Yeah, I love this. Love it. I mean, we love all it. know I love postmodern stuff. And this is like, this is the point, right? <laughs> like, mm. you know, the yeah. author being the god. Fun, fun stuff. Fun stuff. I mean, like, this is like an impactful episode. And how I know that for sure is that when you talk to Supernatural fans who are not like in fandom at all, mm. this is like something that they talk about this mm. episode. And Chuck specifically. Because, like, I have a cousin... I think I've told this in the podcast. I have a cousin who, like, never watched Supernatural. I mean, I have a cousin who watched Supernatural Filipino dub Mm. on television. And then when that ended, like, kept watching it. I think until season 9. Yeah, so when Supernatural ended, we were texting each other, like... OMG, like, it's ending for real. Yeah, Dean fucking died. No, I mean, she doesn't know it yet, because, like, she hasn't watched it at that point yet. Uh-huh. She was like, I'm just going to binge it all, like, I don't know, if it comes out on Netflix or something, which it Horrible never will decision. in the Philippines. She does ask me, like, have you been watching it? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, without, like, spoiling everything, like, does Chuck come back? Is he God? And I was like, mm. yeah. And I don't know, I find that so fascinating because, like, the last season she watched was season nine. Right. And that was, like, the f- number one and only question she has is, like, does Chuck come back and is he God for real? Which is super fun. I think that's super fun. Yeah. Goes on to be, like, and, like, you had to live through the bugs and the ghost ship. Like, I'm so sorry. Horror is one thing, but to be forced to live bad writing... If I knew it was real, I would have done another pass. <laughs> Incredibly so funny. Real for that. <laughs> he was so fucking real for that. So, you know, Sam Dean both are like, you're not a god. Sam says, we think you're probably just psychic. Um, but like, focused on their lives. At this point, they still have never heard of a prophet, right? Yeah, they haven't. Slay. Also, why Slay. is Red Sky in the Morning considered a bad episode? What's that about? I really think it is perfectly fine, even fun. It's a fine But, like, episode. a lot of people just think that the ghost ship plot is dumb, which, like, maybe it is, but, like, Bella was <laughs> there and she was, like, having fun, so I don't, yes. I don't know what you have against women having fun, but, like, maybe you should examine yourself. She was, she, she fake fainted, she had yeah. fake sex with Dean, like, it's fun, it's fine. I mean... It was pretty dumb how they got rid of that ghost by having his brother hug him to death. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I was just going to bring up, they sick two ghosts against each other and in the process got rid of both of them. Like, isn't that so fun? Yeah, kind of. But it is something that never happens again. So I guess it's like, it's like, well, that's kind of out of nowhere for supernatural lore or whatever. It's not out of nowhere. They're using the power of familial bonds and anger to get rid of a ghost. Yeah, suppose so. And that's, you know, very emotionally and thematically resonant in the TV show Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure it that literally Lawrence, is. <laughs> whatever his last name was, will appreciate knowing that. Lawrence Andrews, if you're out there, we think 306 is good. Besides the, the old woman sexually assaulting Sam at every opportunity, that was bad. But the rest of it was good. <laughs> Sorry that Julie Siege was mean to you about it. They should have had a scene where... Was it Yellow Fever? The coward do something something? Yeah. They should have a scene where Chuck, like, defended his writing choices in that episode. Oh, it's oh, not out like, yet. You're not a dick. <laughs> yeah. It's not out yet, so there's no, like, fandom response yet to that episode. Because that's a season four episode. Sad. Well, yeah. it should have happened in the history of Supernatural. Yeah. He should have been like, I never come out to defend my writing choices, but just so you know, <laughs> the Winchester will never be a dick. Chuck realizes that, oh my god, like, this new book is meta. It's very Vonnegut. And then, you know, there's a, oh my god, Dean Reads moment where he asks Slaughterhouse 5 <laughs> Vonnegut or Cat's Cradle Vonnegut. And, like, Sam's like, what? You read? And whatever, whatever. Um, but Chuck says yeah. that it's Kilgore Trout Vonnegut in that Fun he stuff. wrote himself into it. He wrote himself being confronted by his characters. 
So, in the laundromat, you know, Sam's doing laundry, which, is this the only laundromat scene we get? Because I know a lot of Supernatural fandom is centered around why didn't we get to see them do laundry more often. For real? Well, I think so. Yeah, well, it's nice to see them doing laundry. Yeah, but also, like, in, like, season eight or so, Mm. they do end up in the bunker, and they do have laundry areas there. And they do laundry there. Dean's reading Chuck's latest manuscript, and he's reading about himself in a laundromat, like, sitting in- yeah, blah blah blah, mirrors reflecting mirrors. Sam gets narrated by Dean a bit about how he's having doubts about Chuck and whether he was telling the truth. Chuck also says that Sam turned his back on Dean, his face brooding and pensive, and Dean says that Sam definitely has his brooding and pensive shoulders on, which was fun. Like, they are brothers. And then the next thing is that Sam has the thought that Dean is a dick. And Sam goes, the guy's good. Um, meanwhile, in Chuck's house, he's just having more visions. And they're of Sam meeting Lilith in a motel. And then, like, her, like, pulling him on top of her in the bed. Well, we don't know it's Lilith yet. It's a, a blonde woman. But I know she's Lilith because that's the, the vessel in the Lucifer Rising gifts. I don't know if we had this conversation this season yet. But I feel mm. like in a past conversation, Kate, we like kind of thought of Lilith as knowing she was already going to die. Yeah, but And it in being this episode, self-sacrificial. Yeah. It is revealed that she didn't. Like, yeah, like she, she just, just found out, out and she wants out. Which I think is a lot more interesting than how we perceived it in the past. Yeah, we don't get to that until way later in the episode. Sam and Dean, back in Chuck's house, and Chuck has a new set of chapters in his hands. And yeah, he was like, oh god, like, you're not, like, this, is, this was so much easier when you guys were re- not real, and... Uh, he was like, you, Dean, you're especially not gonna like Which, this. Which, like, is crazy, because it's about something bad happening to Sam. Like, does Sam not matter to you? Like, do you hate women? Like, what is this? Yeah, you're right. Like, Sam, you're going to die, but <laughs> Dean's gonna be pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Lilith. She's coming to get Sam. Well, Chuck says she's coming for Sam, which is pretty funny. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, Dean goes, coming to kill him? And Sam's like, oh no, when? And Chuck says, tonight. And yeah, she's just gonna show up. Chuck starts reading from his manuscript. And he goes, Lilith patted the bed seductively, unable to deny his desire. Which is such, like, now we know what what happens later. His desire to get close enough to her to stab her with the knife. Yeah, like Sam did not succumb in that thing. Like, what are you talking about? And they sunk into the throes of fiery demonic passion. Which was Sam grappling for the knife and then her also grappling for the knife. Well, I mean, it's passion in other ways. <laughs> and Sam is in this belief, like, yeah, what the he's fuck? He's laughing. I'm gonna do this. It's cute. Yeah. I like his laugh. He goes... I mean, come on, fiery demonic passion, and Chuck goes, it's just a first draft. (laughs) He's so important to me, he's so funny. Like Chuck is? Yeah. Oh yeah, just because, is it just because you write sometimes? No, I mean, I just think it's funny. Mm. You're so mean to me, why are you so mean to me? This is the thing I'm sensitive about. (laughs) What what are you supposed to do about? <laughs> Nothing. I don't know. I guess I, I guess you you're just having more fun with this episode than I am, so I'm trying to figure out what it is. I well I just think it's fun. Mm-hmm. I, I just like like this episode to me feels like reminiscing on an episode that I knew I loved in the past for the fun reasons. And Got being it. able to see the fun reasons now and be like, that's still fun. Yeah. I guess I just, I don't find the supernatural meta thing, like, I'm sure the supernatural meta things were, like, fun when they first happened in season four, but just because I, like, 
know so much of the Chuck stuff and how, like, tiring it is and how the authors just, like, or the writers just use it to excuse how they're terrible at writing. I guess, like, I don't have that that fresh new joy that you can access. Also, like, this is different from the other episodes that I like. Like, for example, On the Head of a Pen. I, I mm-hmm. love that episode when I first watched it. But, like, it's so serious. Mm-hmm. And it's so, like, like the themes that they were dealing with were kind of heavy. So it's, like, difficult to interact with it. And then, like, oh, my God, it's so fun way. But this one is just purely, like, it's so fun. And it is so fun. Dean, Dean goes, wait, but, like, Lilith is a little girl. So, like, the last time Dean saw Lilith was um. No Rest for the Wicked. Yeah, the last time he saw a property was no rest for the wicked, and then he saw her as a vision at the end of Yellow Fever, oh, which yeah. was great. Bring bring her back. I'm so sad that they do this. Yeah. Where, Sam, did he see Lilith? I mean, it's implied that he... Not implied. He was tracking down Lilith. And I feel like he was like at some point in the same area as her. But he never he never saw her because he thought that the little girl who was set up as a trap for him um, in the flashbacks in 409 was Lilith. So he still but thought she not. had a predilection for little girl vessels. Well, right now she's not in a little girl. She's a dental hygienist. A comely dental hygienist. From Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah. Dean asks like what happens after the demonic passion and chuck's like yeah i don't know haven't read it yet and sam is still like you know like we don't have to take it seriously obviously it's not gonna happen dean is just looking at sam like glaring at him but you know the implication is like oh but you did sleep with a demon like that is something that already happened but she does bring up later like verbally it's not the same thing like he and ruby were like they like knew each other for like weeks before that happened, but ugh, whatevs. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it matters to Dean just because yeah. he's a horrible person. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, to like, I genuinely think it doesn't matter to Dean. Like, even with like the women in his life, it doesn't matter. You know? Huh? What do you mean by that? Like, he, I don't think he makes a distinction of like, this is a person I just met and I'm gonna sleep with them. And versus this is a person I've known for weeks, so I'm gonna sleep with them. To be fair, has Dean known anyone for weeks? Like the same way Cassie. Ruby and Sam has. Oh yeah, that's true. They were for real seats together. But what's that like? They got together after knowing each other for a while, or they got together and then got to know each other for a while. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I don't know. With the the Lisa thing, they slept together, and that was. Yeah, the they of their just had marathon sex for a week. Yeah, Dean asks, like, how does your whole psychic thing work? And Chuck goes, you mean my process? <laughs> and yeah, Dean is like, yeah, your process. And Chuck goes like, yeah, I have a bad headache. Then, like, aspirin is useless. He drinks until he falls asleep. The first time it happened, it was just a crazy dream, but then it just kept happening and happening. And then he just got possessed by the spirit of the Winchesters and just had to write it all down. Yeah, so he does he control his actions when he does the writing? No, right? What do you mean? What like, do you mean by that? How aware is he when he's doing the writing? Because, like, if he's so sorry about, like, writing them into these bad situations, wouldn't he just, like, not write? <laughs> Like, he can have his dream and then not write. Like, you can just keep that shit to yourself, bro. Well, but here, I think it's different. I mean, here, I think because it hasn't happened yet, it is actually helpful. And, like, kind of a requirement for him to write this shit down. Why? Well, just because, like, it is actually real now. And if he can warn these people about it, then... No, but he he's currently should. operating under the belief that, like, he's a god and everything he writes becomes true, which is different from, like, I'm seeing into the future and whether or not I actually put it down to paper doesn't matter. Well, I mean, Sam and Dean basically told him it's a psychic thing, so it's not like he's making this happen, he's just seeing shit that's about to happen. Okay, so they've convinced him by now. Yeah. 
Okay. The lighter doesn't cast say something that's like anything the prophet has written must come to pass, so it's like does the actual act of putting it down on paper change how much it has to happen? That is interesting because when Kevin does it, he like gets like possessed and recites it, I think. Mm. Is that true? Have you seen any of the Kevin Epps? I mean, you haven't. No. Have you seen any of the Kevin scenes? You haven't. Okay, well, <laughs> sorry if I'm completely misrepresenting Kevin right now. But like, I think, like Donatello too. I think it's different. I don't know. There was also the translation tablet with those two. Like, they have mm. to translate shit. Right. There was a whole, like, Donatello translating stuff thing. Yeah. Wonderful I name, mean, by the way. I mean, they change a lot of the prophet lore between now and then. Like, I bet that, like, no archangel ever tried to protect Kevin when Sam and Dean were being so mean to him. Or when, when but, fucking I mean, Crowley kidnapped him and tortured him. To be fair... Uh, both Lucifer and Michael were in hell at that point. Um, Gabriel was presumed dead, and Raphael was for real dead, so... Oh, Slay. What about what about for Donatello? Was there anybody around? I don't know. Was Gabriel back by then? I have no idea what season Donatello was in. Was he 13? He, I think he was in season 13. They, they, they battled Gog and Magog, Dean and Gas. <sighs> Because <laughs> because Donatello said they should. <laughs> yeah, he had chicken wings too. I don't know. I think it was in season 13. I think that was before um, Gabriel, Gabriel came back. Okay. Also, the person who killed Kevin was an angel. It was Ezekiel. Oh, the... Gadriel. Gadriel. Who the fuck is Ezekiel? Uh, that was the, the fake name that Gadriel gave Dean... He was like, "Oh, I wanna, I wanna possess Sam. I'm totally Ezekiel." And then Dean called Cass, and Cass was like, "Oh yeah, Ezekiel's a He's nice fine. guy." Because Gadriel's yeah. n- what they blamed him for what letting Lucifer Eve into the something. Garden of Eden or something. Yeah, like getting the apple. Blah blah blah. He is mm. just like a Zerophel for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it is fascinating the way they talk about Chuck and the. Uh, because, like, it is such a very different thing from the other prophets, which does lean towards the more he's already God here. Because mm. it's just a different, like, he's not really a prophet here. He's just for real God. It, the idea of, like, God being like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm just going to make myself forget. But still being, like, forced to, re- to like, have these thoughts. It's, like, it's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. It's like even God is not in control of what whatever the fuck. Yeah. Like, he can be in control of the, you know, the other things in the world, but his head is still his head, and his head is still, like, not fully in his grasp. That's mm-hmm. real fun. Yeah. There's this super corny scene where Dean is like, Sam and Dean are talking, and Dean is like, look, why don't we, and then just Chuck, like, hands him the manuscript, and mm-hmm. Dean was like, you you knew I was gonna give it, You were, I was gonna ask for it, and Chuck was <laughs> like, yeah. And it's like, like one Everyone one could presume that. that like that is a reasonable <laughs> next thing to ask from like literally everything that happens this scene i would also think that that's what dean is doing and i would also hand him the manuscript like yeah gaff outside they're in the impala and sam's reading the manuscript and the line is, the minivan accident wasn't that bad, but Dean was still seeing stars. He scrapped, he scratched absently at the pink flower band-aids on his face. And Sam's like, bro, like, literally that would never ever happen. You would never use a pink flower band-aid because they're gay. Everything that's written in this manuscript is, like, dumb. Like, it won't actually happen. Like, Chuck is, is not for realsies. Dean says that, well, he's been right about everything so far. I was expecting for the sake of humor for them to, like, get hit by a minivan right now, but it didn't happen. Very sad. If Sam does not believe that Chuck is for real, what the hell does he think Chuck has been doing with all the other novels? I think, I think he's probably just, like, I think Chuck is a psychic. And I think that he got all the other novels right and stuff, but, like, sometimes he also just comes up with ideas on his own because he's a bad writer, and he just comes up with bad writer ideas, and this is one of them. It's fascinating because, like, 
again, I don't really recall what the prophets, prophets, blah blah blah. But if I recall it correctly, those are very words heavy. It's like says words, and now you have to interpret the words or something. But like mm. here, it's like visions. Like Chuck is having visions, yeah. and then he has to word those visions. And like I mean, with the you know, we just talked about how the wording for the Sam and Lilith coming into bed together is so different from what actually happens. Right. But like that is what it looks like from the mm-hmm. vision. Yeah. But yeah, it's fascinating. For sure there's also aspects of the book that's like how does Dean feel? How does Sam feel? And like is Chuck privy to that or he he just assuming from what he can yeah, see from I think Sam he's and just Dean's faces. From their faces. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like yeah, all the actions are known but the emotions blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But those are still also written down. Yeah. And as you said, Cass says what is written comes to pass. And like, maybe Dean didn't even give a shit about that one. But because Chuck was like, and he was so sad about it. This, like, <laughs> does he become sad about it? Yeah. Huh. Good question. I don't know. I bet there's a listener right now who is so pissed at me for saying all that shit about Kevin and Donatella, if it's not even correct. Like, so fucking true. I accept all your anger. It's fine. Sam says that something else that happens is that there's a plastic tarp on the rear window of the Impala flapping like the wings of a crow. Dean just says that, whatever, I generally believe what's going on, so let's just skip town so we don't have to face Lilith. Sadly, I guess the only bridge that can take them out of town is out so they cannot leave it is impossible for them to go so they have to spend the night in town so they go to a diner dean's now reading the manuscript and he's just saying okay let's just do the opposite of whatever it says here in order to avoid running into Lilith. So it says here that we get into a fight, so let's not fight. It says you do research, you can't do research. Dean gets a bacon cheeseburger in the the script, so he cannot get one now. And then we just get like a scene where apparently like the bacon cheeseburgers at this restaurant are really, really good, but Dean's suffering so much because he can't order it. He has to get the veggie tofu burger, but he pronounces tofu as tofu, which, like, I feel like <laughs> is racism to me. Jesus. Um. I mean, do people, do like, people in this time, when was this, 2009, did they know what tofu was? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, like, yeah, it had, it definitely has, like, a very specific kind of reputation in the States at this time, I think. But we've already discussed our love for tofu in an earlier episode. Yeah. Exactly. Well, tofu is my my best friend, my lover even, yeah. and no one can ever say anything yeah. bad about it. Um, Sam orders the Cobb salad. They have this conversation where Sam says, like, it's literally ridiculous to think that I would hook up with Lilith. And he's like, right, because something like that can never happen. What a dick. And then... Sam says that, hey, like, you know, since we know she's coming, like, this might be a good opportunity for us to, like, defeat her properly. And Dean goes, like, are you, like, angrily? But then he remembers that they can't fight. And he goes, it frustrates me when you say such (laughs) reckless things. I wish that they continued this a bit longer, like, stuff where they actually have to communicate calmly instead of fight because of the script, but... I mean, Sam immediately is like, I do wish to fight. Because he goes, well, it frustrates me when you'd rather hide than fight. Slay, go Sam. No, he's talking about Lilith. Hide from Lilith than fight Lilith. You're so mean to Sam. No, no, I know that that's what he's talking about, but I'm saying that, like... I feel like the way that he delivers it, like, it is fighting. It's so combative, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, Dean's thing is, like, I think a genuine attempt to be, like, I'm saying this out of concern for you, blah, blah, blah. And Sam's just like, well, you're a coward. Have you considered that? (laughs) You're a coward, a loser, and you will never be happy. Like, so true. And, uh, you know, there's uh, a bit where... 
Okay, well, first, Dean says that, you know, it's not hiding, it's being smart and, like, strategic, because we're not ready for this yet. And then he gets his burger, and he takes a tentative bite, and then he goes, like, oh my god, this is delicious! Tofu is, like, amazing! But then the waitress comes back and is like, oh no, sorry, I accidentally gave you, like, the bacon cheeseburger. That is so irresponsible! (laughs) Yeah, no, Like like... Yeah. Like, luckily, there wasn't, like, an allergy or, like, a religious thing there. Because, like, yeah. Yeah, but I guess the point is just that they cannot escape fate, and what Chuck wrote forced that waitress to be bad at her job, even though she's probably not actually bad at her job. Ugh. Very sad that, you know, the the, the butt of this joke is, like, my best friend Tofu, because the idea is, like, well, of course a Tofu burger could never actually taste good. Like, well, you don't understand true love and you'll never be happy. Like, I hope you know that. Stop making Tofu into other things. It will never be as good as a burger, but a burger will also never be as good as a Tofu that's well cooked. Like, fuck off. Kill yourself. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I don't know if we can keep that in. So we are at a motel. And yeah, it's a horrible motel apparently. Because even Sam was like, dude, this is like, it charges by the hour. Why are we here? Mm. And he was like, yeah, but like the other motel is where it was said that Lilith will find you. So like now we're at Hooker Inn. Dean has like a couple hex bags putting up. He's preparing to not find Lilith. And Sam is, like, kind of pissed about it, like, oh, are we just gonna have to be here all night and hide? And blah, blah, blah. And Dean was like, yes! He goes out to park the Impala or something? Because it said he was gonna drive it. And so he was like, no, I'm not going to. And yeah, just no homework, watch some porn, blah, blah. I still think about that fucking scene where Sam watches porn, like... (laughs) fully sat up in bed like <laughs> just being like I wonder what's happening here <laughs> I'm so curious this is an academic endeavor for me Ugh. I mean he and Cass should watch porn together and take notes like it's an important part of their relationship that this has to happen yeah also Dean specifically references the Casa Erotica franchise which as we've mentioned before like that it sucks that it exists yeah so Dean is like about to bark. There's this bit where, um, because the motel is called like Torre Ador or something, and the the lights go out and it only leaves the R and E and D on. Mm. So it's like, wow, now it's the red motel again. Yeah, I think that's pretty fun. I think that's yeah. pretty fun. And then like as he parks the Impala, starts walking away, and then suddenly like a couple of people are trying to break into the car. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. And he was like, no, what are you doing? And then he starts, like, running back. And then he gets fucking vanned. He gets yeah. mini vanned. Hell yeah. We're back at the motel. Sam opens the door to Chuck, who he has invited over. He has him come in. He shuts the door. And he goes, like, I was just wondering how much you know about me. And he looks so scared and vulny. And like, yeah, like this is his greatest shame of all time. The fact that he even bothered to ask about it at all. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Chuck asks, what do you mean? And Sam goes, have you seen visions of me when I'm not with Dean? And Chuck goes, oh, you want to know if I know about the demon blood? Sam is upset a bit about this. And then he goes, but, like, you didn't tell Dean? And Chuck says, I didn't even write it into the books. I was afraid it would make you look unsympathetic. And Sam goes, unsympathetic? And Chuck goes, yeah, come on, Sam. I mean, sucking blood? You gotta know that's wrong. (laughs) Supernatural will just say things with no logical backing, no basis in truth or reality. And just expect you to go along with it. No, but, like, the thing is, this was kind of, like, vindicating for me. Mm. Because, like, constantly, the two of us, we talk about, like, is Supernatural trying to just, like, is the logic that's supposed to happen here just that it's wrong just cause? Mm -hmm. And we keep on trying to be, like, oh, maybe there's, like, 
you know, like it's the thing that killed Mary, like mm-hmm. the demon feeding Samus blood. So it's like maybe the guilt comes from there, Baba. Like we go through all these hoops to figure out what the fuck <laughs> is supposed to be wrong with this thing. And here's Supernatural just outright saying it's wrong just cause. Yeah. And it's like, like well, we okay. felt like it. We just thought it was. So yeah. And we yeah. figured you would know that too, just cause. Yeah, no. What the hell? But uh, I don't know. Supernatural logic. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. They really will just say something and expect you to agree due to some weird ass social norms that I never got schooled on. Sam, I think, starts looking near Teary as he says the rest of this, which is. It scares the hell out of me. I mean, I feel it inside of me. I, I wish to God I could stop. What is. What does feeling it inside of him feel like? What do you think that is? Because last last time we discussed this, you were like, I don't think it's actually like changing him like mentally or whatever, but like he he's feeling something. Well, I mean, the his powers are getting stronger. And right. Maybe there's an aspect of it that's like demon blood, but as Ruby said later on, it's not the demon blood blah blah. Dumbo, Dumbo. Is he what you say? Oh, like you, Dumbo. you never needed the feather to fly, Dumbo. But he, also, he like, does have he to juice up on demon blood. Yeah, and he also has to juice up on demon blood in order to. Well, the withdrawal is just because the demon blood is addictive. Him saying that he feels it inside of him means that it does something, not yeah. necessarily to do with his powers. But also, I don't get the you didn't, you never needed the feather to fly, Dumbo thing. Given that he has to drink a bunch because of drugs, Lucifer, yeah, yeah, in order to house Lucifer, so like, what was that? <laughs> he drinks. He needs to. <laughs> he needs to drink a bunch of jugs. Jugs of <laughs> demon blood, doesn't he? Aren't they in jugs? <laughs> yeah. No, it's just jugs in Filipino. It's like very close to the slang word for boobs. Oh so yeah, that's I mean, real jugs fun. is a slang word for boobs too in the U.S. Oh yeah, hell yeah. So yeah. Fun when, stuff. And, okay, at this point, he's, like, sort of walked away from Chuck and, like, sat down on a chair just due to his emotional distress, and Chuck is standing and sort of, like, has a sort of, like, understanding therapy-ish look on his face and in the tone of his voice, and he goes, like, but you keep going back. Sam goes... What choice have I got if it helps me kill Lilith and stop the apocalypse? And Chuck says, I thought that was Dean's job. That's what the angels say, right? And Sam says, again, like he said in 416, Dean's not Dean lately, ever since he got out of hell. He needs help. Men will drink demon blood instead of having their brother go to therapy. (laughs) But like, okay, what does... I mean, this is something that's been said multiple times. I don't see it. I don't see that Dean's changed. Do you think that Dean's changed? He's not strong enough. I can't do it because it's too big. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he has. Yeah. You know, we are so brave for not even making a joke when that scene happens. Yeah. yeah. I mean... <laughs> I thought about it, but I was like, let's not. Yeah, I didn't really think about it because um, it was Dean who was speaking, and when Dean's talking, I had to, like, zone out, so. <laughs> you black out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Whatever. The show says that Dean's changed. Fine. Maybe he has. I mean, there is the aspect of Dean is a lot more careful now. Like, let's not attack Lilith. Let's not blah, blah, blah. In season one, two, and three, was Dean more gun ho to like get into Not situations? Not in season three, because in season three he was just like, whatever, I, mean, I should just was. die. Like, stop trying. Yeah, and is that what Sam is comparing now Dean to? Like, obviously that's different, Sam. He had one year to live back then. Yeah, and also season three, Dean had also given up. Like, is he comparing him to season two Dean? I think season two Dean just had, like, energy because he was focused on, like, rescuing Sam in whatever way he thinks rescuing is. Like, that's different. In season one, the only situation where I can remember Dean, like, hesitating to do something was, like, with fucking Meg or something. But that's from a different place. That's, like, if this happens and ends, like... Mm. Like, you, you, Sam, are just going to go back to college and whatever, and it's just going to be... Mm. Like, I want this to be a family mm. again. 
And so that's a different thing. And there's also the whole don't shoot dad. Mm. Which can be seen as that. So like Dean was always like that. Yeah. Dean was always like, let's prioritize the safety of the family. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess maybe it's just that Sam's perception has changed because like the way Sam operates has changed. But also, I don't know if the way Sam operates has changed that much. Yeah, but I do buy it, like the whole like, oh, Dean came back different, but really it's because yeah. Sam has changed so much, and it's the same Dean, but like Sam doesn't get mm-hmm. that because he's the one who yeah. changed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think I think perhaps that is what is happening. Um, so Sam says that, and Chuck asks, "So you've got to carry the weight." And Sam says, well, he's looked out for me my whole life. I can't return the favor. Which is all nice. But Chuck does question how true this is. What What are your thoughts on how true this is? Well, I think it's fucking rude to be like, Dean is a weakling and a loser and he'll never do anything worthwhile in his well, entire existence. Well, what if existence. it's true? And I'm, do- and I'm saying all this because he took care of me when I was a baby. Like... <laughs> Okay, Sam. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess it's mean. But, like, what if Dean is a weakling and a loser and will never do anything worthwhile in his life? Like, have you considered that? I guess I guess it's, like, a patronizing thing to say. But, like, uh, Dean's been patronizing Sam for three seasons. I think equality is when Sam gets to do it back. And Chuck says, like, sure you can if that's what this is. Sam immediately gets quite defensive when before he was doing a lot of the the teary open etc thing and he goes what else would it be and chuck says well maybe the demon blood makes you feel stronger or more in control and sam says no that's a lie you're lying to me be on the lookout for false information in the chat right now yeah okay so i mean i think we're supposed to think that what chuck's saying is true so I guess, I don't, I'm wondering in what ways, why Sam would be looking to feel more in control or more strong. Like, what created that as an emotional need? Just, like, Dean being dead, um, probably. Yeah, Dean being dead. And, like, we've talked about how his entire life, Sam, feels like he's being pushed around by bigger forces. Mm-hmm. And so the more in control comes into that. I'm more fascinated by the fact thinks that it's not true. Well, he's saying that it's not true. That does that mean that he does actually think that it's not true? He's probably in some amount of denial. He's prob- he probably is. Like, I think the demon blood is making him feel stronger. Like in a in more of a like a psychological thing than a physical thing, mm. you know? Because like I mean, a part of it is that like you know you never needed the feather to fly dumbo yeah that's probably true but like the fact that this thing is going to make me better and i'm taking it like that does something yeah and like i feel like the implication of ruby's lines is like you know like the whole demon blood thing is just to make sam more com like believe in himself more and you have to really lean into it, you mm-hmm. know? And, like, the demon blood is making him lean into it, i.e., like, fighting the demons or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he ended season three with, like, he'd been trying the whole year to save Dean, and it wasn't working. And then near the last second, Ruby was like, there's something that I can, like, that I could have trained you with to, like, kill Lilith and save Dean, but it's too late now. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is important for him to, like, take that chance now and be like I'm doing what I couldn't do last year and that means that I feel a lot more in control psychologically and such. Huck says I'm sorry Sam I know it's a terrible burden feeling that it all rests on your shoulders and Sam goes does it all rest on my shoulders? And it's delivered well. He he looks like scared and sad and like he already knows the answer. And it's it's good. It's a good moment. And Chuck goes, that seems to be where the story is headed. Which is so odd, because he did just say, but the angel said that Dean is the one who's gonna stop it. He's just he's just therapizing Sam, right? He's just like asking leading questions to try to hear more about what he feels about the demon blood, like 
Mm. I don't think that he's like it is okay, fully okay. because of Dean and like I'm telling you this fact I think he's just like well didn't the angels say this so why are you still doing this I think it's separate from like what he sees is gonna happen god that's miserable but that is like quite nice of Chuck to be like yeah you're the one who's gonna either save everyone or fuck everything up but also have do you want to talk <laughs> yeah. about your feelings <laughs> yeah I mean, he he did feel guilt earlier about, you know, killing their mom and all of that, whatever, so... And he would also feel emotionally attached to his characters a bit by this point, I think. So, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your feelings, Sam? That's his babies. Yeah, that's Blorbo from his books. Sam asks, am I strong enough to stop Lilith tonight? And Chuck says, I don't know. I haven't seen that far yet. Sorry, Sam. We go back to Dean. And he is in the middle of the road, just lying down. Like, we see him, like, open his eyes slowly. This shot, everybody uses this shot for something or other. Because it's, it's like, a close-up of Dean's eyes as he opens them. I didn't notice, because, again, when Dean's on screen, I stop looking. (laughs) And the lady in front of him is wearing super dangly star earrings. And so that's the stars that the prophecy, or the book was talking about dean was still seeing stars the woman is apologizing i'm so sorry we hit you are you okay and then she goes oh also my little daughter has been going through a doctor face and then we pan to the other side and um like dean's face is covered by pink flowery imagine you you hit a man with your car and then I your know. daughter runs out and starts trying to put pink flower band-aids on his face. Like, would you not stop her <laughs> and remove the band-aids? <laughs> You're like, yes, please go ahead and desecrate the body of this man I just hit with a car. <laughs> hey, man, I know we just hit you with our minivan. And your collapse on the ground probably concussed. But, you know, we have you have band-aids on your face, so good yeah. luck. It's just, this is so irresponsible. Like, this isn't just, like, a soft hit. Because, like, I understand if, like, you hit someone and, like, it bruises their side. Like, that does happen. They don't collapse, but their side is bruised. That is already, like, pretty Mm. bad, I think. But this guy legitimately went to the ground, like, passed out. Yeah. And they're like, oops, sorry. Like, (laughs) what? And, like, who fucking goes to a guy who's collapsed on the ground? And be like, hey, didn't see you. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, also I let my body... I'm sorry, I let my daughter play doctor with your your possibly dead body. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> this family is hilarious. So fucking true. <laughs> and then Dean gets up. And yeah, the the car is like fucking broken. Yeah, the, the like the back Impala window got is completely shattered. Shit. What the fuck did they even seal inside there? I don't know. Everything that's good is in the trunk. Everything that's good is in the trunk. Where the hell is Sam's laptop? Oh, Dean took it because he didn't want Sam doing research. And it- oh my god, did they steal his laptop? They're gonna open that thing and it's gonna ha- it's gonna have multiple tabs open about various like yeah uh, mythical like supernatural creatures and then it's also gonna be like fucking virus to hell and back because Dean keeps trying to watch your porn in it like yeah that's gonna be a horrible laptop is, good luck is Sam like a keep tabs open guy or is he like the it's really important that you shut down your laptop regularly for its health kind of guy i think sam has multiple folders on his bookmarks Mm. and like multiple stuff inside the folders of his bookmarks just like yeah i agree i think he has that but he does shut down his laptop and clear all his tabs each time because like again like dean uses his laptop sometimes so yeah yeah it's it's bookmarks instead of keeping tabs open what a nice organized young man yeah I also really love when browsers let you like close the window mm-hmm. and then when you open it back up it reloads all the tabs when you close oh, yeah. it. Wonderful. I think Sam should also do that. Just mm-hmm. why not? Okay, so like the thing is like is it so bad to drive the car with the, the window like missing? Like 
If he's the tarp? I mean, I'm saying like if Dean wanted to go against Chuck's prophecy, like he didn't have to add the tarp. Like, is it like necessary? The air is gonna go inside the car and everything. Yeah. And you you won't be able to speak to each other because it's so noisy. But like I'm, if Dean cares so much about not having Lilith come, like, you'd think he could deal with that. No, but at this point, it's like, uh, It's well, gonna whatever. happen, yeah. Like, he's not upset that Lilith is gonna come later. He's upset that Sam is not upset that Lilith is mm-hmm. gonna come. Yeah. Dean goes to Chuck's house. And he is uppy sati. <laughs> He's saying, like, oh, I just got hit by a minivan. I can't believe everything you write comes true. And all you say is, like, oh. And it's like, yeah. And Chuck is scared of Dean. He's saying, please don't yell at me, blah, blah, blah. And Dean is saying, like, why are you not telling us? Like, how do you know what you know? And then eventually, somebody shows up. Well, he shoves it's Chuck. Cass. He shoves Chuck, and that's what causes Cass to show up. I feel like that's important. Oh yeah, this is like a reaction Cass is to, protecting him or to Chuck being physically threatened. Yeah, Cass says Dean let him go, and this man is to be protected. It is fun whenever they do the pan to Cass when he appears yeah. somewhere, and it's like, well, oh, it's Cass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the scene does make me kind of crazy because, you know, two episodes ago, Cass reiterated his enduring faith in God and all that shit. And now he's, like, here in the room with him and, like, he doesn't even know. He just, like, yeah. rescued God and he doesn't know. Cass says, he's the prophet of the Lord. Yeah. And Chuck recognizes him. Yeah. And... Cass goes, yeah, it's an honor to meet you, Chuck. I admire your work. What if Chuck wanted to fuck Cass? Well, what what's the familial relationship between God and the angels? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, if Chuck is God at this point. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what their familiar relationship would be. It's like, no, like the archangels are definitely God's children. Like, that's, that's their dad. Oh. Cass calls God, like, father, right? I call God father. True. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Sorry, God. I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> it does mean something. But, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Because, like, it is a bit... I mean, we already said in the past that we'll get more into it once the, like, weird angel relationship yeah, starts I mean, happening. Okay, I feel like the angels call each other brother and sister, but probably just in the way that, like, nuns and monks do... Just because, like, if they were actually all meant to be fully siblings, they would not have the Cass-Hannah storyline that they have. Exactly. And also, it's just, like, for example, like, Cass and Balthazar. Like, that's a different relationship from Cass-Gabriel. And, I don't know, Cass and Uriel. And it's just, obviously, like, different siblings have different relationships with each other. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I just think that they wouldn't have done cast Hannah if they truly thought all angels were fully related to each other. I don't know. It's odd. Supernatural is an odd, odd show Mm. when it comes to the angel relationship. Yeah. Also, if, like, Mm. Cass is an angel. If Cass is an angel. Cass is an angel. I don't know why I'm saying if with that. And then if Reapers are also angels, then what is the relation of April and Cass? Because April was an angel. Yeah. A Reaper angel. Yeah. So what's that? And like, is is a Reaper like so distant from angels already that that's like unrelated? Yeah, because I, How I about feel like, like Reapers, the Cupid? Because Reapers don't serve God. They serve like death, like the apocalypse death, guy. That's yeah. like So like, different. what is that? And also, like, there's also the thing with, like... Also... I mean, I not the thing, but, like, like, there's also, like, a cherub or something in this show. A cupid? Like, a a cupid. A cupid. Like, what's... The cupid is an angel, but, like, it's a specific type of yeah. angel. And what does that mean in terms of, like, angel hierarchy and relations? I don't... I, I don't, don't think they thought about it. 
Is it like, is this like a, we are thinking so much about it in human terms when these beings are not human kind of situation? Mm, maybe. But like, also supernatural is so human. Yeah, they think, think about everything in human, human terms. terms. So like, I don't know. Yeah, and we will never know because supernatural is confusing and inconsistent. Supernatural is like pinnacle, like too many cooks in a soup. <laughs> is that true? Too many cooks in a soup? Too many Too many cooks in the kitchen? Too many. Yes, making the soup. I don't know where the soup is from. I don't think wrong, there's a soup there in making. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were too many spoons in the soup. Is that also? I've not thing? heard that, but maybe it's There's a, a thing. soup phrase. There's a soup version of this phrase. I'm so sure. I've never heard a soup version of the phrase, but I believe you. Thank you. Dean is like, whoa, this guy's a prophet. Like, that's not true. That's a lie you're lying to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he asked if Chuck knew about this, and Chuck was like, I've had dreams about it, but, like, I didn't want to fucking write it or tell you because it sounds so fucking preposterous and arrogant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can write yourself into a story, but, like, as a prophet, like, that's fucking annoying He was totally fine with calling himself a god, like, an hour ago. (laughs) Yeah, but that's... Calling yourself a god IRL is, like, fine. But calling yourself a god in a story is, like, dude, shut the fuck Mm -hmm. up. Dean asks if it means Chuck is deciding their fate and Cass says no he's not he is just a conduit for the inspired word and Dean is like the word of God like the new testament the new new testament and Cass says these books one day they'll be known as the Winchester gospel (laughs) annoying as fuck I hate that and Dean and Chuck are in disbelief Chuck specifically is like Oh, God. And they both say, you've got to be kidding me. And Cass goes, I am not kidding you. He's so funny. He's so funny. He's so charming and cute. Chuck, he is distressed. He goes away. And Dean goes, him? Really? And Cass says, you should have seen look. Uh, Dean asks how the shit is chosen. And Cass says, I don't know. It comes from higher up the celestial chain of command. That is interesting to me because it does add to the cast doesn't know shit. They don't tell him much. Dean asks if there's any way to get around prophecies. And specifically the Sam Lilith love connection. Cass says whatever the prophet has written cannot be unwritten. As he has seen it, so it shall come to pass. I suppose it's not the right thing. It's just, you know, as he has seen it. But also, yeah, what he has written can't be unwritten. But I guess he could just be talking about that metaphorically. We go back to the Red Motel. And, you know, Dean's like, Sam, we're getting the fuck out of here. Come on. He realizes that Sam burned all of the hex bags. Because Sam wants Lilith to come here if she's going to. Dramatic Um, as fuck. There's like woods beside this motel. You can just throw it in the woods or something. (laughs) And Dean says, no, this isn't an if. Chuck is a prophet. Cass showed up and told me about all that shit. And Sam goes, okay. And Dean's like, so we're getting out? And Sam's like, no. He says, maybe Lilith will slaughter me. Maybe she won't. And there's only one way to find out if I can take her. And I say, bring her on. Is it Chuck's conversation with him that really strengthened his resolve here? It's like, it does all rest on me. And I've decided that I want it over sooner rather than later. Yes, I suppose. But also, he is still pretty pissed at Lilith, just in general. That's true. I mean, later, the thing he says is like, she'll die no matter what. Like, okay. Loser. I'm sorry, sorry. (laughs) What? Well, maybe he is. Dean is reluctant, and Sam goes like, oh, you think you'll do it? Like, you think I'll go dark side? And Dean goes like, yes. And then he says, the the way you've been acting lately, the things you've been doing, and then the thing that he, the two things that he lists that Sam's been doing that means that he's going to be evil is that He killed Alistair, 
and he's been using his psychic powers. Wow, it's literally so evil to kill a demon that you wanted to kill yourself, Dean, and then to use your powers to kill demons that you want to kill. Yeah, I mean, Sam, like, does, like, look up and it's like, oh no. Like, he thinks yeah. Chuck has stole the, Dean or something. Yep. And then, like, Sam goes, what else did he tell you? And Dean yes. says, nothing I don't already know, which is so fun. So fun! Yeah. Well, okay, he said, yeah, he said that Cass told him about the killing Alistair thing. So when Sam asks, what else did he tell you? Does he think, I guess he knows the angels know about the demon blood thing because of what Uriel said in 407. I guess that's why. So, okay, so it's Chuck and the angels all know Sam's secret and he wants to keep that from Dean. So, okay, Cass does know. Why hasn't Cass told Dean? Does Cass Maybe Cass doesn't know. Yeah, I, but, okay. At the time when Uriel knew, though, like, Cass was his superior, so Cass would have known. Yeah, but they gave Cass the job of being Dean's haunting pot, so, like, they just didn't tell him a lot of shit. <laughs> well, like, if the point of 403 was, like, we're telling you the full story about Sam so you'll stop him from what he's doing, like, wouldn't it be helpful to know that, like, Sam's currently drinking demon blood so that Dean will try even harder to stop him? Maybe Uriel didn't know. Maybe he was just saying shit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sam says, it's not what you think. And Dean's like, well, no, I think it is. And then he grabs his bag and he's gonna leave. But Sam refuses. And Dean, you know, he walks angrily out. But before he goes, he drops his bag down on the chair again. Which is, I think, a nice wordless communication of, like, okay, fine, if you're staying, I'm staying. But I'll need uh, to, like, just step out for a bit. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Um, I do, I do, okay. So you mentioned Uriel's words to Sam. Okay, right? yeah, should we review that. exactly what he said so that we yeah. can understand? Yeah. I want to know, because, like, is the thing that he's berating Sam for just associating with Ruby? Because I think that is a reasonable thing to, for Uriel to be like, well, oh, Well, yeah, Uriel specifically that you so brazenly use the power Azazel gave you is what he said. So he's talking about, like, don't use your abilities. I mean, you, you can still say that about Sam without knowing that he drank demon blood, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, Azazel... Or, sorry, Uriel mentions that Azazel's profane blood is pumping through Sam's veins, but he doesn't yeah. mention, like, Ruby's profane blood. Yeah, like, if we can assume that the angels can smell, like, the demon blood, which yeah. I think there is some... That, yeah. So, like, if, if Uriel smells, like, a demonic something in Sam, he could just be like, and that's Azazel's like, blood. Azazel's like, leftovers, yeah. Yeah. Not, like, Ruby. So I think that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I think, like, if Sam was just a kinky guy who, like, did blood play, would Dean, upon finding this out, be like, and you're fucking evil, Sam? Because, like, the way Chuck says it earlier is, like, sucking blood, you gotta know that's bad, right? And it's like... Yeah, if it's so, like, so if blood it's like play a is thing, also evil. <laughs> yeah, like, what's going on here? What if he eats someone out and they're on their period? Like, okay, so what now? <laughs> Sucking blood, like, you gotta know that's wrong. Yeah, oh. I don't, it's like, what the, the, you mentioned, like, previously that it's, like, the association with it as being, like, something vampires do. And I know yeah. during, like, the Zacharias, like, version of Dean's voicemail, Dean calls Sam a vampire, right? Damn, that's real fun. So I guess there's that. I don't know. I I think it's also the fact that it's with a demon. Like, if he was doing blood play with like, like a human woman, maybe it'd be fine. I mean, that's what I'm asking. Like, would Dean still be like, "Oh my god, you're just like a vampire for real. Like, you're fucking evil." <laughs> I yeah. I don't know. It, it might be more like like you should know that this is like a dangerous thing to do. It's probably like. The evil blood in you is probably doing something. I don't know. Dean goes outside, and I see the the blue lights of, like, the ice machine and the pink lights over the doors, and I go, oh my god, it's time! It's this scene! It's this it's scene! It's time! So, he goes, like, 
to the, just like to the air. Well, I feel stupid doing this, but I am fresh out of options. So please. And he sort of he spreads his arms out a bit and he goes, yeah. I need some help. I'm praying. Okay? Come on, please. And then a voice <laughs> behind him says, Prayer is a sign of faith. This is a good thing, Dean. And it's Cass. And Hello, I mean, Cass. I love this. Hello. Specifically because of the, you know, the turny turn. Like, they do this a lot in Supernatural. Like, having mm-hmm. Dean turn. Yeah. And Cass is Cass there. Appears over it's super show, fun. Yeah. Super fun. It's great. It's so yeah. good. So what does he mean by that? What do you mean? The prayer is a sign what? of faith? Yeah, this is a good sign. Or a good thing. Just I think like, it's just that he trusts, like, some kind of heavenly power to help him. Right, because it is a difference between, like, I don't want to save the world, I can't do it, find someone else, I don't trust what God has yeah. chosen for me. Do you think that 417 affected him at all? Like, he doesn't act like it ever happened, but do you think that's part of it? I really don't, because, like, the casting is not, like, he's not asking cast to be, like, help me out as an angel. Mm. It's like, help me out. With the stuff that you know as an angel. And with your angel powers, but to thwart the will of God, you know? Like, it's a different yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. He's still not cooperating, but he's now just think He's like, now like, okay, Cass, help me out. Mm-hmm. Like, he wouldn't do this with any other angel, you know? But he doesn't name Cass during the prayer. He doesn't specify that it's him. I don't think he knows that it'll be him. Really? Yeah. I think he's just asking the general void. Do you think he's asking Cass specifically? I think so. Well, he didn't say it, so... That's fascinating. So you think this is just a void prayer? Yeah. He says... Yeah, he just said that he's out of options. I feel like this is just like a... I'm just tossing Anyone who can help? Yeah. Yeah. God, that makes me emo. There's a scene in season 9 where... He prays to Cass, like, specifically to Cass, like, whatever mm-hmm. you did, please just be here. And then, like, when Cass doesn't reply, because, I mean, Cass can't hear him, he's human. He goes, okay, fine, and then he braces himself and goes to any angel who can hear me. Which is huh. fucking something for me, to me, personally. Yeah. So, Dean asks, like, does this mean you'll help me? And Cass says, I'm not sure what I can do. And Dean makes his demand, which is to drag Sam out of here now before Lilith shows up. But Cass says he can't interfere because it's a prophecy. And then Dean says the funniest line, like I literally laughed out loud. <laughs> you have <laughs> tested know, me either. and thrown me every which way and I have never asked for anything. Not a damn thing. <laughs> like... <laughs> Dude is doing historical revisionism right <laughs> now. <Literally, laughs> he literally self-actualized as a liar. All Dean does is ask for things. That's all he does. He's so funny. Okay, but, okay, at the beginning of the, the sentence when it's like, you have tested me, like, Cass starts to look away, um, probably because, like, he doesn't like the direct eye contact. And also, Dean's been, like, walking closer during that line, so, like... He's, like, trying to avoid confrontation. He probably feels some amount of discomfort and guilt. And, like, probably especially about the forcing Dean to torture Alistair and then learning later that that was all a plot by Uriel and it was completely unnecessary and also designed to kill Dean. So, like, yeah. Sorry, Cass. But then when Dean says that I have never asked for anything, Cass looks up. And I'm like, this is due to how Cass is thinking that this is a lie and Dean is lying. And Dean goes like, but now I'm asking. I need your help, please. Is this a usual Dean move? He does this like, um, he closes his eyes to please, like a, like he was doing like his little like please face. And it's so funny to me. <laughs> he literally, this is literally Dean fresh out of options. He will just put on a face. Yeah. Is this Dean's usual move? Yeah, what like his current play is I'm going to make myself really vulnerable and hope that Cass, who really has a soft spot for yeah. me, takes pity on me. Like, yeah. what is, what's his usual play when he's desperate? Have we seen it? Do I recall it? Do you recall it? 
He was desperate, I suppose, in home when he calls John and yes. leaves a voicemail. That's desperation, I feel like. Yeah. And in that and one, he was just like, um, I'm scared. Can you come mm. home? So, so that's- yeah, this is this is Dean's thing when he's out of options. He goes into little kid mode. Yeah. Cass says, what you're asking, it's not within my power to do. He, like, does, like, a little look up before he starts talking. Yes, And a part yes. of it is, like, exasperation, but also I think part of it is also, like, at yeah. heaven. You know, just your mm-hmm. typical, like, heavenly imagery uh-huh. of, like, when he's making yeah. a decision and it's between Dean, who's in front of him, and the heavenly power that be, which is above, like, he, yeah. he like, looks up I think up it's to. also, like, a yeah. God, please come and help as well yeah. sort of gesture. And I mean, in a way, God does come and help Dean, just has to threaten him at gunpoint to do For so. For real. <laughs> <laughs> Typical yeah. God behavior. Yeah. <laughs> And Dean's like, oh, why? Because it's divine prophecy. And Cass says forcefully, yes. yes. And, you know, Dean's like, what? So we're just supposed to sit around and wait for it to happen. And Cass just says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And, like, before he does that, he sort of, like, he presses his mouth together and looks with his big, wet, sad eyes for a few seconds before he, <laughs> like, goes, I'm sorry. Oh Yeah. And then, you I'm know. I'm literally <laughs> giggling to really <laughs> And yeah, Dean gets super mad at this. He says, screw yeah, you. Yeah, he goes, screw yeah. you. You and your mission. You're God. If you don't help me now, then when the time comes and you need me, don't bother knocking. He really will He's just so do this. Funny. We're yeah. done. <laughs> We're done. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> He's just like a zero for real. <laughs> Really, truly, fully, and he leaves. I like, I like the way he leaves because it's not like he turns around and walks away from Cass. He, is that he, he walks he towards walks Cass so Cass. that he can yeah. basically shoulder check him as he walks past yeah. him. Yeah, it's a very, it's a confrontational form of walking away. It, it, it is kind of important to me because, like, I mentioned in the last episode, where like, or well, I think in on the head of a pin that like. Dean knows that Cass likes him and is using that specifically as like a, oh, you'll do this thing for me because you like me. Oh, you're not going to do it. Well, fuck you personally. I don't like you. Yeah. We're enemies. And like yeah. the, the I, I said there that like, I think the first time that happened specifically, we're like, Cass like responds to that by being like, okay, I'm going to do it for you. Because you're pissed and not specifically because I believe in whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. Even though, like, he does believe in it. It's just, like, the main thing that yeah, instigates the, the, the action. impetus, yeah. Yeah, is that Dean is gonna stop talking to M5 ever because of this. Do something or I'll never speak to you again. Like, I said there that the first time that happens is in Lazarus Rising. But, mm. like, it's happening here right now. It's happening yeah. here right yeah, now. We're seeing it. Yeah, I mean, Crazy. Cass's face journey during Dean's little speech was yeah. Cass looks down at Screw You, which I think is like the, the shame and the sadness thing again. God, poor guy, you could do so much better. But anyway, <laughs> at like the Your God part, Cass looks up sort of resentfully. So, like, it is like a hey, like, don't mock me for, like, my faith. Like, you still have to be nicies to God and all that shit. Um, and then once Dean starts heading away, Cass starts looking down, like, kind of thoughtfully. And then, like, after, like, a little bit of thinking, he's like, okay, yeah, I've decided I'm gonna help. He goes, Dean. And Dean's still walking, so he goes again, Dean. And Dean turns around, and he's like, what? And Cass says... (laughs) You must he turns, around. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm? he turns around, faces Dean, and, like, his face just does a complete change. Like, because, like, before this, his face is of, like, he's sad, and he's, like, apologetic almost. Yeah. And then here, it's just fully, like, game face. A little bit of a hint of a smile, even. And it's like... Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Cal. It's like yeah. he figured out how he's to so help. He's so pleased without... with himself that yeah. he's like, Oh, I know how to help you without going against my orders. Yeah, he's so yeah. he's so pleased. He's so pleased. He goes like, 
You must understand why I can't intercede. Prophets are very special. They're protected. And Dean's just like frowning and like, I don't know what you're going after. And Cass says, If anything threatens a prophet, anything at all, an archangel will appear to destroy that threat. Archangels are fierce. They're absolute. They're heaven's most terrifying weapon. (laughs) And then in season fucking 13 or no, season 14? No, 12, whatever. I'm just thinking about the Lucifer-Michael fight that looks so bad. <laughs> Where they levitate into the air. They're so fun. <laughs> Supernatural is so unserious. <laughs> oh, by the way, like, like mm-hmm. to add to the face casting. Like, here, yeah. when he's saying the words, he is, like, doing a face also. He's, like, scrunching his face. Like, when he goes, yeah. they're fierce. Yeah. They're absolute. And he's, like... I don't know, this guy is like, he, we should put him in a theater production, I think. <laughs> like, he's giving it his And by this guy, this we mean way. Castiel. We mean, we mean Castiel. Castiel. Yeah. Asia Collins can fuck off forever. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah it's oh. so cute. It's so he's cute. So and I think cute. a part of it is like trying to communicate to Dean that like, I'm trying to tell you something else. Mm-hmm. Like bring it deeper into my words but it's so cute yeah and i feel like kaz is always so like direct and stuff like i feel like this is like his first try at being sneaky that's true this is his baby's first mini revolt like he's yeah Yeah. and also like it's just because i think i've mentioned this before that Katz has a tendency to when he speaks say what he wants to say first and not answer dean's questions right Mm -hmm. he will go into a conversation say everything he has to say and a lot of times not even interact directly with what the fuck dean is trying to tell him especially in the earlier episodes he's in and this one i feel like this is cute in a way because it's like as you said, like, he is trying to be sneaky. And so, like, he is trying to tell Dean something. But yeah. now he has to find a way to work around it. And mm. that's what makes it such a fun, fun, fun conversation. Because yeah. Cass, who is usually so, like, direct to the point that, like, sometimes it doesn't even feel like he's having a conversation. Mm-hmm. It feels like he's just saying things by himself. Yeah. Here it's, like... This is so obviously like communication. Like I'm trying to communicate something, and I like, and it's just it's fun. I think it's fun. I think it's real yeah. fun. Yeah, it's good. So Dean's starting to catch on and goes like, and these archangels, they're tied to prophets. So if a prophet was in the same room as a demon, and, and he then starts walking them, towards us, yeah, yeah. 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 And the camera angle on Castle, this next one, is so fun. Like, it's sort of, like, under It's close him. to his face, yeah. Like, it's close to his, his face, chin, it's but kind him. of, like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. By his he chin. He looks so cute. He looks, like, kind of like a chipmunk, but, like, in the best <laughs> way possible. Yeah. I think it's because of the way that the light is reflecting off of his teeth and also how they look his bigger eyes, because yeah. of the angle. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like a little hamster. Yeah, yeah. Um, he goes, Then the most fearsome wrath of heaven would rain down on that demon. Yeah, he's and he holding goes, his chin up. Like, he yep. uh, goes, yep. Dean, go. Oh, go. And, you know, Dean figures out, Dean figures out what he's saying. And then he does, like, a little, like, he tilts his head to the side and, like, purses his lips in a, like, mm-hmm kind of uh, facial expressions and then he goes just so you understand and then he turns his head to the side his eyes are also going to like some far away place mm-hmm. and he goes why I can't help yeah and he is, is fully so looking away fun. he is fully looking away it's so fun he like it's like a, like a smaller version of his statue mode thing in like 416 except he's like role playing it now and like I, I love this because it's like it's fake casualness, right? Like it's to <laughs> show, it's to pretend that like, oh, we're having a conversation that is so casual that I don't even have to look you in the eye for it because like this information is not personal whatsoever and doesn't matter yeah. whatsoever. And then like, I don't know. It's but, just yeah, cute he because can't like, hold it. yeah, it's cute because like 
First of all, it's just Dean here. It's like he doesn't have to do the casualness whatsoever. The words are still the same, you know? Like, even yeah. if he doesn't do this look, look thing. But he was like, you know what? I'm here to prove that Uriel may be the funniest angel in the garrison, but I am the best thespian in all of history, so it's fine. Okay, and then he slyly slides his eyes back around. He looks back. Yeah. He's so funny. And like his head is still tilted away. So it's just like mm-hmm. yeah, he's no, looking it's from the corner just of his, his eyes. eyes that move. Yeah. And like it's such a it's such a cunty flick of the eye too. Like mm-hmm. it's not like he's looking slowly towards Dean. It's like BAM. It's, it's so go Cass. He is go so Cass. slaycation. Yeah. And Dean says, Thanks, Cass. Thanks, and Cass. And then Cass, who before all this was like Trying to do like the plausible deniability and being so sneaky thing. Just says, who also in yeah. the past who would always just like leave whenever at the end of a conversation as soon as the information is meant to be conveyed, like does not stick around for pleasantries. He breaks all of those habits by saying, "Good luck." Good luck. Mm. It is important to me. Yeah, I have a th- yeah. Also, like there is like. You know, whenever, because with me, when I say good luck, it's always, and it's someone I know who, like, is religious, or, like, not even religious, it's just, you know, someone who exists around me in the same culture as me, so I know they're, like, Catholic in some way or whatever. Mm. I say, always say good luck and God bless. But, Mm -hmm. like, when it's, like, something that, like, I know this is a person who would not like to be said God bless (laughs) you. Or, like, it's a situation where it's not about God's blessing. It's just about being lucky. Like, I I, also, I just say good luck. You know? And it's like, mm. those words have different implications. And so whenever anyone in media does say good luck, I do think about... Like, I'm, obviously, this is not the intention of, like, most American shows. Like, when people say yes, good luck and, like, anything... They don't anything, say God bless often. They don't, yeah. they don't also say, like, good luck and God bless. But, like, whenever these things happen and anything, I do think about the fact that, like, oh, if, like, he's not saying God bless you. So, like, that means something. And, like, for most of the time, that means absolutely nothing. But here, like, to me, like, it does mean something because, like, mm. it's good luck and it's not about God's blessing at all because he's directly going against yeah. God's blessing. Yeah. And that is important to me. Yeah, it's he good says luck. in 416 that angels are the masters of fate. But, like, yeah, this is different. Good luck. It's good luck. Yeah. When, when do you, th- at what point during this conversation do you think Cass was like, I'm going to give Dean this information. I think it's the screw you. Screw you okay, and your yeah. mission and your God. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then when he goes, when you need me, you get to ever get to me. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Dean. Yeah. So that, that was scene of all time. Scene of all time. The rest of this episode is kind of whatever. I mean, it's not kind yeah. of whatever. It's a genuinely good episode, but uh. nothing will ever be... Cass and Dean under the neon light of that motel room scene. Yeah, I guess Dean was also there. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Dean is now going to Chuck's house. When he gets in there, Chuck is like, oh my god, you're here. Which is fun because it's like, oh, it's going against the story or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's different. And he goes, what are you doing here? I didn't write this. Ah, I love it. And then mm-hmm. he's telling Chuck, like, come with me to the motel. Um, I need you to stop Lilith. And then Dean is like, okay, because you're a prophet. If you go there, an archangel will just kill every demon around you. And Chuck is like, no, but I haven't seen that yet. Like, the story is not going there. And Dean says, like, Chuck, you're the only shot I've got left. And Chuck says, but I'm just a writer. He's just a little guy. And yeah, Dean says, this isn't a story anymore. This is real. And you're in it. And I need you to get off your ass and fight. Chuck feels like... It seems like he's convincing Chuck. And then Chuck just goes, no freaking way. Mm-hmm. And Dean is like, okay, fine. Uh, I have like a bunch of guns. And if you don't come with me, I'll shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> and Chuck Slay. is like, well, I-, I thought I was protected by an archangel. And Dean said, well, I mean, let's see what's the quicker draw. He's so fucking funny. We go to Sam. 
who is in the motel room. And he opens the door when there's a knock. And then suddenly, well, Lilith is not in front of the door. But when he closes the door, Lilith, Lilith is inside the room already. And she goes, hello, Sam. And Sam says, I've been waiting for you. And her eyes does the roly white thing, which is, mm. you know, fun. Mm. I still don't know what the fuck that means for um, Alice there. But what evs? Yeah. And so, like, Lilith is like, okay, where's the knife? It sounds like um, it's by the bed. Why wouldn't he just put it in his pocket? He's trying to get Lilith to walk there. Yes. It's still... I don't know. There's got to be another way to bait her. Couldn't he just be sitting on the bed? Yeah, but he has to open the door. Okay, fine. He could go sit on the bed after he opens the door. <laughs> he opens the door and then he sprints back to the bed and sit there. So yeah. true. Yeah, so Liz starts walking. But she feels that there's a devil strap right before she steps into it. And so she lifts the rug and like basically like Breaks. destroys the devil's yeah. devil strap. Yeah, Lilith is like, "Oh, you're going to have to they try don't harder do than that." do shoving Sam. in supernatural. Can't they just shove her into the devil's trap? Yeah, Why do they always true. have to be tricking the demons into walking into that? Like literally just <laughs> shove them. <laughs> Sam raises his hand and does the whole like I don't know, trying to destabilize Lilith or whatever. But uh, Lilith says, you're strong, but you're not that strong. Not yet. And, you know, it shows because her hair is just being blown by the wind a la shampoo commercial. But Oof. it's not hurting her. And Sam says, so why don't you throw me around then? And Lilith says, because I can't. And you know it. You're immune to my charms. We're at the stalemate. Interesting! Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I, I do wish they did not sexualize Lilith, though. I mean, they already did it in 316 when she sexually assaults him. But I would I would just like a, a villain who is a woman who is not like this. And we had that. And then we don't. <laughs> no, I mean, the part that I thought was interesting is that, that they're immune yes, the, to each other. Yeah, it's, it is a um, stalemate thing. That is neat. Is Sam immune from every demon, like, in this way? I guess because, like, Lilith's probably, like, top dog in hell, so... Because, like, I think about the fact that Alistair tried to throw him into in that graveyard and yeah. just couldn't, right? And we yeah. were like, why is that? Yeah, apparently the reason why Sam is immune... You know... Whatever it is that's making Sam immune, why did it just disappear after season 4 and 5? And also, why didn't he just keep well, on drinking thought, demon what, blood to yeah. make him stay immune? Well, first, okay, yeah, what it was was demon blood. Second, because Dean was so mean about it. But it's just, I think it's irresponsible. <laughs> like, at that point, to not utilize to, this power. If you can find a way to do it ethically, I don't know, yeah, befriend but, the demon, which they did do. Like, yeah, true. He and Crowley should have sucked and fucked their way through all those seasons of Supernatural. For real. And isn't Crowley, like, Crowley has that whole, like, thing with, like, Where he I want to be loved blood? when he gets injected human blood. So they should have just stupid kept on exchanging story blood. Like. Like. I mean, maybe it's fine, but just the fact that it's triggered by being injected with human blood. Hilarious. Stupid. <laughs> it's so funny. But, yeah, whatever. Every time, like... A demon gets injured and passes out, and then someone calls 911 and they get taken to the hospital while unconscious and then get a blood transfusion. They wake up crying and wanting to be loved. It's just, it's so stupid. Everything is so stupid and supernatural. They yeah. love biodeterminism so they do. much. Like, what is even in a blood? Sincerely, what is in a blood? <laughs> Like, I don't know. I it's don't just know. So magic particles. Particles also, like, of magic. I mean, everybody has said this to Helen back, but like, if we're going to commit to the Sam is a witch bit, like, what what makes a witch different enough to need Literally, witch killing to need bullets? A special bullet. Like, that's just a human being who does magic. How much magic do you need to do to qualify as a witch? What if you don't even call yourself a witch? You're just like, oh, I'm interested in him, but it's like an academic discipline. It's not like a religious... Like, what? What happens then? Oh, I'm not know. into the whole, like, worshipping demons thing. But I do love to do a trick here and there. Like, does that make you a witch? What's happening? 
And like, why is, why does it become biological? Like, that is the most unbiological, like, supernatural, quote unquote, thing to be. Because that's just a human being who found a book. Like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know. We'll never know due to how it's a bad show that is bad. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it says she's here not to throw Sam around, but just to talk. Because, yeah, she is offering a stand down. Because she wants to stop breaking the seals and all that because she won't survive the war. Turns yeah. out she will be killed off right before the good bits start. Yeah, Sam is incredibly uncurious about this. Like, I know it's because I already know, so I immediately am like, I mean, it's because she's the last seal, but like, wouldn't one just be able to sort of guess from this wording that, like, she is the last seal? I think you would be able to guess that her death is essential. Yeah. Like her death is essential to starting the apocalypse. And Sam yeah. is smart. Sam is smart. Like Yeah. And like he is in this situation as someone who has been in this situation for a long time. Like I feel like he understands the like fucking like whatever logic supernatural is running and he lives in this world. Mm-hmm. And so I think he should like hear this and be like, okay. Huh? Yeah, he should at least ask a question about it. Yeah, but he absolutely the gaff. Yeah, I guess it's just that he's been so focused on revenge for so long, blah, 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 that he's just not even paying attention. Because he says later yeah. that he never even considered taking the deal, so probably the whole time he's yeah. just thinking, how do I get to the knife? How do I get to the knife? Isn't that absolutely crazy? I know! He didn't even think to consider it. But yeah, Lilith says... I wanted to go back to the way it was before I had angels to deal with 24-7. And yeah, good old days and baby blood all the time. Hell yeah. And yeah, what she wants in return is Sam and Dean's head on a stick as a consolation prize. And she goes, what do you say, Sam? Self-sacrifice is the Winchester way, isn't it? Sam is like, oh, you think I'm so stupid that I'm gonna do this? And she says, I make a deal I have to follow through. Those are the rules and you know it. Are you really so arrogant that you would put your life before the lives of six billion innocent people? Maybe it's all that demon bub pumping through your pipes, man after my own heart. It's so annoying to me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That they made Lilith. It's annoying to me also. And it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's so, like, specifically it annoys me because we have Lilith who is so fun. Yeah, she and like, was great. And then they made her an adult woman and immediately fucked her up. I don't know. I feel like Lilith had so much personality, you know? Yeah. Like, she has, like, a specific cadence, specific way of being. Yeah. And, like, those are specific interesting wants things. When they were yeah. very different from these ones. And then, like, now they put her in a hot woman and then put her in a black dress which they put every hot demon woman that they have in and it's like yeah she just becomes a generic hot demon woman in a black dress yeah they forgot she had a personality as soon as she was fuckable i say generic because this is how every other hot woman in a hot woman demon woman in a black dress (laughs) acts in this show like i don't know it's just it's annoying yeah, many we yeah we've seen what two other cross two crossroads demons who were hot women in black dresses, whose whole thing was like oh I'm evil and I want to fuck you like that was all of it yeah and now that yeah. is all of it and like I mean the the charm of Lilith as a villain is this is a little kid who mm-hmm. is so charming and cute and yeah. also. So murdered her dog evil. yeah yeah and like it's making everyone sit down and eat cake and it's like you know the fucking like it's it's fun and like because again like i mean i think we said this before like most child horror is like a child who's like standing by your door going mommy i think i throw up <laughs> but like here it's like she's a kid who is fun and you know like having yeah, she fun. she just wants the exact same things that kids that want a but kid she'll wants. go yeah. to like greater lengths to get them. Now it's yeah. like just I don't know it's annoying. Yeah. And also and I, so the thing funny is okay, another thing. Siege. Yeah. 
another thing is what I liked about Lilith is like she wasn't like her color coding was very like red and white, right? Which mm-hmm. is such a fun thing, like because the, well, those are not the colors that they yeah. usually do for supernatural demons. Yeah. So she does stand out as like this is a different kind of demon, mm-hmm. and yeah, like. I don't know, putting her in the same outfit that they put, again, every hot demon woman that isn't Ruby in this show. And it's like, girl, shut the fuck up. I guess Meg is also a hot demon woman that they do not put in a... True. Black dress. Mm-hmm. Did they put um Meg the person in a nightgown? <laughs> was she? No, no. She was... I think she had pants. Okay, good. Good. Well, don't worry. They put Lilith in a white nightgown before they kill her in 422. (laughs) Well, at least they brought back the color code. (laughs) Supernatural just does not think of its female characters as people. Yeah. Like, being a woman always needs to have a qualifier. Mm. Or else, like, the the term woman itself is the qualifier. It's like, you know, like, Bobby is a cranky old guy who... Is good at his job, but is pretty pissed at everyone, and like he has, and, and then you know, like usually, like when they have characters that are men, like it, it's like that. And with their women characters, it's like hot woman, and that's like the <laughs> entire character. Yeah, hot woman parentheses evil, hot woman parentheses yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, hot woman parentheses kind of like doesn't like Dean, but also likes, and it's like what the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> Like if you're you have a female character and their entire gimmick is that they're a woman, like maybe you should reconsider. It's very sad when Julie Siege and Sarah Gamble and Rael Tucker do it because it's like I I believe that you are a woman. Like perhaps draw on that experience. <laughs> Supernatural already, you know, it's the aesthetic of the show, and so I understand that like one single like writer, blah blah blah. But like sometimes I'm like. Sarah Gamble did do, like, season 6 and 7 as a showrunner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't remember much about those seasons due to, like, like season 7 specifically, like, cast so hard and so raw that I just blacked out completely. Mm. Well, actually, uh, Charlie was in that season, and she was wonderful. Mm. Charlie immediately was such a wonderful, wonderful character. Although, there is something to say about the fact that they had to make her a lesbian to make Dean treat her properly. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, lots to say, lots to say. <laughs> but we'll mm-hmm. say it in season seven. And she's a sister like to Dean. Whatever. Who fucking... Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Supernatural is so bad. What are they doing? Yeah, I hear it's a bad show, but some idiots still want a podcast about it. Yeah, Sam says, um, you think I'm like you? I am nothing like you. <laughs> Which she's is what so Cass corny. said to Anna in 416. That's true. Do you think this is, one, true? Like, do you think Sam actually means it? What is, What does it mean to be like Lilith? Like, to murder a bunch of people? Sam does murder a bunch of people on cases, but, like, it's not for fun. <laughs> I think what he's saying here is, like, I may have demon blood, but I have demon blood in a mar- far more cooler and morally superior way than you. Which, like, I mean, I think so. But yeah, like, also, I like, mean, it's not yeah. the demon blood that makes it, you know, like, I don't fucking know. Yeah, well, okay, I guess Lil's point is, like, I think the demon blood is making you selfish and arrogant, and Sam's like, Just like me I'm for not, real, yeah. I'm not selfish and arrogant the way that you're selfish and arrogant. I feel like I don't know enough about how Lilith is selfish and arrogant to go, like, to come to a definite conclusion. I mean, Sam wouldn't kill his dog and make everyone eat cake, so I guess he is nothing like her. Sam will only run over a dog on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and then be yeah. forced to adopt it by exactly. the, the worst veterinarian of all time. Does he? It's, I mean, we've had this conversation before and I forgot the answer, but like, if she's I a veterinarian... For, I forgot like, what her job was. We'll find out in season eight. <laughs> also, Amelia is her name, right? Which yeah, is the which same is name Jimmy's as wife's name. Jimmy's wife, which is so funny to me. What if Sam does get together with Jimmy's wife? I mean, they switched actors for her in season 10, 
So that's like, true. Maybe this. Maybe it was also her in season eight with a different switched actor. I guess she she took a break from hunting down angels so that she could fuck a military man and then Sam. And then after that all went down, she was like, no, actually, that sucks. It's back to killing angels. Yeah, and that entire time, she just abandoned her daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Claire's cool. just somewhere. <laughs> Maybe the dog was Claire just like in Sherlock season four, where he... I have no th- idea what you're talking about. He thought that his, like, he thought that his dog died when he was a kid and it was his greatest oh trauma, God, yeah. but it was actually his his childhood friend, Victor Trevor, who his evil secret sister shoved down a well, and due to trauma, he just imagined the guy as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I will never not be so happy that Sherlock ended as badly as it did, because if it ended with, like, a mid, like, sexist, racist episode, like, all the other episodes, people would still, like, remember it fondly or whatever, but because it, like, just shat all over itself and then (laughs) threw up all over the shit, like, no one will ever be able to like Sherlock again, and that's so important to me. Everyone streams CBS Elementary. Oh, we're- okay, so uh, Lilith is like, okay, are we gonna do it? We're gonna do it. Are we gonna do it? And then she go- and then Sam is like, okay, fine. And at this point, she's, like, on the bed, and she's patting the bed or whatever. Yes. Julie's siege was, like, crazy, like, negative for coming up with this. Yeah. She says, by the way, a contract with me will take more than a kiss. Horrible. Why? Why? Why, though? Horrible. Like, yeah. why? I what okay. is, what are the rules here? Like the higher up a demon is, like the the more you have to go. Like what's the demon level where like you ha- just have to give them a handy? Like princes of hell. Like what did what did Dean or sorry what did John and Azazel have to do? Yeah, exactly. Also, like what is like more? Like what's that mean? Yeah, what does like, it mean? Like okay, like, here it's, moment- it's like, okay. So like a kiss and like a, and sex are like on the same sort of spectrum, and you go like yeah. higher, and like well, more is what like penetration. Like are we going yeah. with like yeah we're going with heteronormative ideals. I'm assuming so. I guess highest level is but, like, penetration. But what if like, it's anal? Like if I if like if <laughs> anal penetration doesn't work, like what's happening? What if I don't know? Yeah, no, like, depending on the bodies of the people involved, like, do you have to run out and buy a strap? Like, yeah, like, do I need to have a strap on to do it? Like, what is happening? (laughs) I don't know. It's absolutely insane. It's hilarious. Like, do you both have to come? Like, what are the rules? (laughs) Like, is it just like you enter? Like, just an inch, and you're like, okay, Yeah, it's just the tip, and then it's like, <laughs> alright, we've done it. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I just, there's a mouse pad where all the, the specifics are printed on that they, they have to review for hell orientation. And she goes like, oh, don't worry, the dental hygiene is in here. She wants it bad, which is horrible. Yeah. Uh... Which, I guess, if that's true, like, I mean, okay. Well, okay, that woman is dead after Lilith exits her body, right? No, but I was waiting. I was fucking waiting for the yeah, woman for to, to like, up. wake up. Because, like, they she is conscious now, but, like, no. They're just looking at the body, and it's like... Yeah, they don't even I thought check. they were looking at the... I was look. I thought they were looking at the body to check if she's gonna, yeah, like, wake but, like, up. it cuts, and then it's like, oh... No, like, they were just looking because they were like, wow, it's bad that Lilith was here. Like, they really don't care anymore. And also, like, this is super fun. Like, we need an AU where, like, they just bring Chuck along to be like, okay, uh, we're going to enter that building and you're going to go, I'm Chuck Shirley, a prophet of the Lord. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, an angel will blast no, down actually, this, this fucking... This is, like, the move to, like, yeah. do hunting forever and ever. You're right. They should have utilized this. They'll, they really will just make stuff up for Supernatural. Yeah, no, I am so surprised. Because, like, they, like, talk about her vessel, like, twice in this episode. So I was like, okay. Like, they're going back to caring about it. But, like, they don't. Yeah. Also, 
If she's dead, how does Lilith have the same face in 422? Maybe she's dead, maybe she just, they just left her in that motel and she woke up and she was like, what? Yeah, and then Lilith came back. Poor woman. Like, Sam approaches and there's this shot where it's Sam Stye and Lilith is like, running her hand up it. I feel so bad for Sam. Yeah. And he leans down exactly the way we see it in like Chuck's vision. But when he gets close enough, he grabs the knife on the drawer, and yeah. he, like she is, I, like he is like on top of her and like about to stab her and everything. But before that happens, Dean and Chuck show up, yeah. and Chuck just goes in front and just goes, "I am the prophet Chuck," and yeah, so true of him. And Lilith yeah. goes, "You've got to be joking." Yeah. Oh, also to be clear, once uh, Dean and Chuck rush in, Lilith has the upper hand and she's straddling oh, Sam yeah, with yeah. the knife. So, like, it's not like they just, like, prevented Sam from an easy kill. Like, Sam was gonna, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. die. Suddenly the room begins to shake and great white light and everything. Yeah. Which and archangel do yeah. you think is tied to Chuck? That would be real funny if it was Gabriel. Like, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, he was just chillaxing, and then he goes, oh, fuck, I have to go do a thing. So it's Raphael, Gabriel, or Michael. I think it could be Raphael, too. Mm, that's true. Didn't yeah. they have a thing where they summon Raphael? How did they do that? Uh, in 503? Cass just does it? Yeah, like their date episode. I don't, I don't remember, due to how I haven't watched it. I think Cass just does it. It would be interesting if they just sit there and it's like, okay, we're going to, like, kill you, but not really. Like, let's just pretend. (laughs) Oh, no, if they were like, let's summon Raphael by, like, calling Chuck over and then putting a demon in the room. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, it could be Gabriel. Uh, It could be Michael. I mean, it could be anyone. It could be either Raphael or Michael. Let it be Lucifer. Why not? Dean is like, yeah, an archangel is going to come here and you're going to be a piece of charcoal. You want to tangle with that? And she is like, ugh. And she gets out of that vessel. And as we yeah. said, the vessel is just passed out on the floor and nobody gaff. Yeah, nobody goes to help her. I really thought in, like, the next shot when, like, they're in the Impala, I thought maybe the vessel would be in the back seat. The vessel would be in the back. Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting. I but was no, they also were like, waiting. It's just the tarp. It's just yeah. the tarp. Yeah. They do not give a single shit. They're in the Impala afterwards, and they're talking. Did they? Okay. Dean drove Chuck here. Did he drop Chuck off at home first before having this conversation? Or was he just like, you find your own way back? Maybe Cass teleported him. Me? Why? Why would he teleport him? Why are you well, talking about? Just because, oh, like, to get Chuck back home? Just because, like, you know, he's there. He's supposed to protect Chuck. So maybe he's like, all right, I'll do you this favor. Because Dean just left in his car. For real. Chuck, yeah. the, the greatest... Greatest danger that can befall Chuck is public transportation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I keep forgetting that. Well, okay, well, it depends on the city you're in, I guess. Like, yeah. a lot of cities have, like, absolutely shit bus systems. I wonder, I don't, I don't know. They're in Illinois. I don't know much. So, yeah, they're in the Impala, and they're talking about what happened. And Dean is like, huh, okay, so, like, that was the deal. You didn't think once about taking it? Sam goes like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, you spent all day trying to talk me off the Lilith track. And Dean was like, well, I'm just saying. But Sam says that, you know, she would have found a way to get out of it. And we would have died. Sam says that that's not the point. The point is that, like, she is scared. Like, I could tell. Like, she's running from something. And then he says she was telling the truth about one thing. She's not going to survive the apocalypse. I'll make sure of that. Okay, Sam. (laughs) Would season one Sam have taken the deal? I think so. I think so. Also, it's just so funny to me that Daniel's like, running from what? And Sam's like, don't know, don't care, don't ask. (laughs) Like, okay, play. 
Yeah. Okay. I, do you think it's only like? Do you think season three Sam would have taken the deal? What's the point at which Sam became someone who wouldn't take the deal? I think season four. Yeah. Yeah. I season agree. three. Like, Dino's gonna die anyway. <laughs> Dino's gonna die anyway, and Sam mm-hmm. was kind of like, "I'll die with you." And also, like, I don't know. It's just it's a completely different motivation back then. It's like yeah. keeping Dean alive. So I think maybe he would give it if it's like, okay, keep Dean alive and me, I'll die. Okay, fine. But the two of them, maybe not. I'm not sure. That's true. He was very focused on having Dean stay alive at the cost of other things. Maybe not the world, though. The thing is, if if the deal here was like Sam's head on a stick, Dean would not say, like, did you even consider taking it? But because it's Sam and Dean, it's like, okay, Oh, yeah, we'll we'll be together? Yeah, that's fine. (laughs) Is Dean gonna go to hell if he dies right now? Well, he should. I mean, he should, but I guess we find out from season 15 that deals aren't forever. No, I mean, deals aren't forever, but also there was this whole thing with Kevin where it's like, oh, I yeah, already went to hell, so I can't go to heaven anymore. Yeah, as soon as the soul touches hell, the soul touches hell, like, they can never, ever go to heaven, except we literally let John go to heaven in season fucking two. Yeah, and also they make Kevin go, I love you guys, which is so, <laughs> it's character assassination is what it is. Yeah, okay, so, does Dean think he's gonna go, okay, but Dean probably thinks he's gonna go to hell for the torture, and he probably thinks Sam I was gonna go to hell for the powers and the ruby association the everything so he's yeah. like we can be friends and have fun torturing each other <laughs> well, i'll go so- easy on you and you'll go easy on me it's fine we can just re- we can just play torture yeah 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 i'll just like carve out like half of your face and you'll just carve out like half of my face i mean that's basically like what the show supernatural is already so Let's yeah, go. and I mean, you love theater. You did um, <laughs> Little Town or something, Our Town, Our when you town? were a kid. And yeah, you, you can release your acting chops by going, ah, when I carve out your face. Like, yeah. it's fine. Exactly. He was a tree in that production, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Probably. <laughs> oh, God. Do you, was he like a freakishly tall kid even then? I don't think so. He was no, right, because he's very I mean, small they, in after school special. Yeah, and he was bullied for specifically being short or something. Yeah, so I guess he, he wasn't a very good tree. Yeah. He was just a mid tree. We go to Chuck's house and he is like pretty much the same scene as the beginning of the episode where he's like sleeping and having a dream. But this time we don't see what the fuck he's seeing. Uh, he wakes up and he turns around and Zechariah is there. Zechariah introduces himself as, I'm Zechariah, you may know me from your work, which is super fun. Mm. And he asks, did you see it? And Chuck says, is it true? Is all of that really going to happen? And Zechariah says, have you been wrong so far? Which is so interesting, because wasn't he wrong this episode? Yeah, he was wrong about the end of this, so... So, uh. I don't know. Well, okay, I guess he wasn't wrong, it was just he didn't write it. It doesn't necessarily mean he wrote a different thing that didn't happen, just that he missed out on this last half. Well, Chuck says, I've got to warn Sam and Dean, and he's like getting up, getting ready to go out. And Zechariah says, nope, people shouldn't know too much about their own destiny. You try and I'll stop you. Chuck is like, okay, fine. And then he like tries to go upstairs or something. And Zechariah asks, like, where are you going? And he goes, I'm gonna kill myself. God, he's so real. <laughs> <laughs> He's so really Zechariah says, don't be melodramatic. We'd only bring you back to life. Ooh. Terrify. It's good. Ooh, it's a great I'm a sicko line. Yeah, Zechariah is like a shockingly good villain so far, I think. Like, mm. I mean, I know he was already smarmy, like, because I've watched this show already, but... Now oh. I'm like, I think I have a newfound appreciation for him. Especially okay, but because he's gonna like, call we... Mary a MILF in season 5, so like, it doesn't last forever. <laughs> he's gonna become bad. Yeah, but like, you know, like last episode when we like tried to break down his speech, I was like, okay, this guy's like, cool, I think. Mm. Yeah, well, Chucks asks, what am I supposed to do? Mm. And Zechariah says, what you always do, right? Okay, I do think Zachary is great in here. The whole time I was watching this, though, I was thinking about how I wish it was Uriel instead. That's true, yeah. 
Yeah, like, they literally did kill him off so that they could introduce Sakuraya. And, like, Zachariah does have, like, a fun, fresh new vibe, but, like... Yeah. Like, also, like, I think Uriel's vibe would also be good for this. Like, he would deliver, like, we'd only bring you back to life again in a different way, but it would also be, like, chilling and good. I don't know. Maybe they could have given Uriel a promotion. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> they literally could have given Uriel a promotion. They'd be like, damn, you're rebelling and shit. What's wrong with you? Here's a promotion. <laughs> no, so exactly. You'll stop doing that. So, what do we think about this episode? I genuinely had fun watching it and talking about it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you could tell that I had literally no energy and no enthusiasm until Cass showed up, and then suddenly I was <laughs> so invested. So, yeah. I, I think it was fun. I think it was great that Cash showed up. All the angel stuff is interesting. It is fascinating how they keep on trying to be like, and Sam is so evil. And then you look at Sam and he always looks so sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, best line, worst line. Um, I really like when Sam asks Chuck, does it all rest on my shoulders? Because, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, for me, uh, I will take the cast girl out and say yes. that I just like the whole cast speech. And finally, I mean, specifically, like when he goes, just so you understand why I can't help. Yeah. Just because, I mean, the line, the whole speech is wonderful. The way he delivers it is wonderful. Specifically, the way that line is delivered was so wonderful to me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Worst, Worst line. line. Um, I just I hate guess, the entire scene yeah, the that we fucking berated to Helen back. Yeah. No, 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 not Lilith. The oh, publisher. the fucking the fangirl publisher. Um, specifically, I would say that like, I do not like the line where she goes like, "Oh, I don't want to make any smart ass article making fun of my boys," and it's like, okay, well, whatever <laughs> yeah. you're doing here is so horrible. Shut the yeah. fuck up, everyone. Yeah. Let's not do this. Let's do a different thing. Um, yeah, for me, it's... I think I really disliked the publisher scene as well. I think I think the time when it starts really taking a turn for the bad is when she starts talking about how, like, Dean is so, like, he was so strong and sad and whatever. But I also have... I would also like to vote for, like, the, like, whatever. It's gonna take, like, way more than a kiss to make a deal with me or whatever thing that Lilith says. Because it's like, well, why? And what if we did not do that and instead did a different thing that wasn't that? Okay, let's spread those sheets. Okay, well, we had a lot of misogyny complaints. I would say this misogyny is, like, tree. I would say that it is almost intrinsic to the episode. Yeah, I'd say so. Just in just the Lilith characterization and her being the main yeah. conflict, I'd say it's there. Racism. Um, uh, they mentioned Casa have... Erotica, so I feel like every time they mention Casa Erotica like, okay, or Busty well, Asian Beauties, like we should just give like we have a to point it, for yeah. a mention. That's true. Yeah, one and homophobia. I don't think they're homophobic this episode. Yeah, I don't think so. I am DB. This is, I, I would believe this is a highly rated episode. Uh huh. On the head of a pin was 9.1, and it's a terrible right life is 8.6. Yeah. I would say this may be higher than on a head of a pin, just because huh. it's a more fun episode and it has more um, relevance to the bigger supernatural story. Okay. So I would say this is a 9.2. Okay, yeah, I think I see your point, but I feel like... I don't know. I feel like it should still be below 416, because 416 is, like, the one everyone tells their friends to watch, so I'll just go one below and go... Or maybe same. Maybe same. I'll go 9. It's a 9.2! I'm nice, correct! Nice, you did I'm it! Right. Wait, Congratulations! I'm all of my assessments. Hell Yeah. People are just saying, like, it plays a lot darker now because of how the story goes. I do think that's true. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say it plays darker. It plays just more interesting. Um, Because I do not like the whole, and Chuck was always a Mm -hmm. sicko all along. It's uh, it's not appealing to me. Rob Benedict as Chuck is fantastic. He was definitely destined to play this role. (laughs) I do think that, like the Chuck stuff is like he is well acted and he is just like you know comedic writer 
It's but like the because the last writer that I remember in Supernatural is like that one. It's just a movie, and it's yeah. like such a different vibe from that guy. But they are both like so character coded, like character. You know what I mean? Like they're mm-hmm. so writer characters, yeah. and that's yeah. real fun. So this person says that if someone is ever allowed to do something like this, then these people are. You could say thank you to your fans in a million ways, but this was maybe the best one to do it. Like that's literally not true. That's a lie. They're, like to they're just talking happening. about how it's written good, but like they also said that they hated you so bad. Like earlier in this episode. <laughs> I, re- I re- decided to review this episode after watching the finale of season 14. Holy oh, shock, he really is the monster at the end of this book. Was that part of the writer's plan? Guess we'll never know. LOL. <laughs> well, I mean, we did got something say in this episode. I guess we'll never know. We did say that. They stole that yeah. from us. I can't believe they did that. Jenna56543 from October 1, 2019 <laughs> stole our words from today. Yeah. How dare they? <laughs> Supernatural writers are courageous enough to poke fun at everything. Themselves, the characters, and even fans. Thank God they apologize about bugs and the ghost ships episode. And Supernatural fans, please stop the Winces thing. This is just sick. I mean, (laughs) correct. Correct on the second part, but like, what the fuck is wrong wrong with with the ghost ship episode? You guys are so mean to Bella and me personally. Castiel's bond to Dean is only getting stronger. His sympathy mm-hmm. is more prevalent. He is beginning to find ways to help the brothers without going all disobedient to higher authorities. So true. Yeah. I'm mean, like, control effing Cass. What the hell did people say about Cass here? Nobody wants to talk about Cass. This is horrible. He is the best part of this episode. Yeah. Well, well. that's it for this episode of Bust Asian Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing Season 4, Episode 19, Jump the Shark. Leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B-pod. And thanks to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod. And check out our merch at babpod.redbubble.com. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustationbeautyspot at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I think this is a less lengthy episode. Is that true? Oh, no. It's...